Right. Wow. Well, uh, we need to check whether we are on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and all this. So you know, the usual lot. I think people we? will, you know, jump on soon enough. Anyway, so folk, I'm just obviously speaking more or less in the updates and stuff that's happening with China and the cultural conflict and what have you and uh, it's something that you should find interesting and obviously the things relative again on Hong Kong and whatever uh, so that's another thing <laughs> that obviously my friend Mike will obviously discuss on in terms of a uh, topic issue uh, I've just quickly two seconds folk I'm just checking yeah, I'm, I'm. I've I've checked that it's it's live on the other platforms, which should be completely fine. I'm actually staring at the eCam software in terms of to see comments. So yeah, if you've got any comments or that, you know, again, feel free to fire away and your questions and what have you. And it's, yep yourself Mike so like I say I mean it's just a case any questions or that and that's that's perfectly fine so um, if I just actually look at some of the stuff uh, so yeah obviously for your for yourself Mike in terms of this being the the Chinese New Year. So, yeah. Yes, and uh, well, thank you very much. Well, first of all, uh, a very happy Chinese New Year to all of our audience. I mean, um, I this is this year is the year of Tiger. I would like to wish everyone a happy, healthy, and prosperous Chinese New Year. The year of Tiger. The year of uh, uh, 2022. Uh, well, well, strangely speaking, it is slightly uh, late. I mean, it is the third day of the first first month of the Chinese New Year, but of course, um, instead of the first 15 days, we traditionally consider that the uh, first 15 days is still considered as the Chinese New Year. So until the uh, uh, Lantern Festival is uh, uh, arrived, this is the, on the 15th day of um, the uh, Chinese New Year, uh, after the fifth, uh, I mean the 15th day of the first month, because I, I you know, it's very easy to get the first month of January flip in, you know, but it's not the January, you, you see the sense, well, I'm coming. Then, um, uh, otherwise, uh, uh, we will still consider as a, as a new year. We still have to have a lot of celebrations. Um, in one sense, I'm glad I'm still single uh, because if you're if you're married, you gotta give a red pocket money to your uh, to your not friends but your uh, junior generations, your generations uh, uh, behind. If you understand what I mean. So um, that that is. Uh, that is, of course, you can argue that this is a great benefit because at the end of the day, you do not have to pay the money to people yet. But that's but that's the thing. Uh, but a happy Chinese New Year, and I wish everyone all the best at the start of the new year. Yep, that's that's great. I didn't actually know that regarding you know some of the cultural things in relation to do with that. So I see it's obviously something they're giving pocket money and and what have you. I mean that's. I just learn something new every day, especially with the difference in culture and what have you. Um, yeah, I was personally actually born in the year of the rat. <laughs> oh, I see. Wow, well, then I can know what age you are, but I'll keep my mouth shut because we can calculate that roughly what your age is. And I'm born in the year of sheep or goat, whatever you want to call them. Um, but that is the thing. Uh, so, well, you can run the calendar yourselves, and so you know what our age is. <laughs> well, but I will keep our lips sealed uh, at this moment, because, um, well, this is age. I think this is a privacy issue, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, for, so for some folk at least. Um, so, yeah, I'm just checking folk. Uh, what extent? So, yeah, how much do you folks out there, how much do you want um, for Mike at least to discuss on the, the Chinese culture or that, you know you know, fe feel free to fire away like I say folk and uh, here's a few comments oops 
don't know who is more boring. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's good for yourself. You know, I, I really couldn't care less what your opinion is. Uh, I think that's, yeah, I, I don't wow. know. Well, because the whole Chinese culture issue is that um, it's very complicated. I mean, just for the sake of last in the last stream, we talk about um, um, you know uh, how uh, ex how different type of cultures. We will come back to revisit. I mean, Aaron, as a, uh, which I do think about that, has raised a very interesting question about how the how the culture it will influence about the politics. And um, this is the thing that I promised we're going to uh, visit back, which unfortunately. Um, I did give us some thoughts on that, but the problem is that we have, we traditionally, we have nice school of thoughts about that. And um, it will be basically like the question, if I talk too deep, basically it will bore everyone go to that. Uh, each school of thought will worth probably one semester at least to talk about in an in-depth way. So how in-depth that um, you guys uh, want me to talk about? I mean, this is a huge uh, question. Uh, 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 that we're going to ask you, the audience, to drop us in the comment section. No matter which platform you are watching from us, I would like you to uh, give us some feedback. I mean, what what exactly do we mean when we talk about? Because, for example, like the Confucianism itself, the major free to the free we call the uh, the uh, uh, beginners, or of course Confucius began the Confucianism itself. You know, that's like a Confucianism. Let's face it. You know, uh, what exactly going to it is? There are major three to over five to six type of uh, leading philosopher of that area. So, what exactly one want us to talk about? I mean, it would be very, very dif difficult to, to say that. Uh, so, uh, I will hope that uh, you can give us uh, some um, indications what exactly it is. I mean, no matter you're watching live, we big platforms it is, or you're watching later after. Um, uh, uh, the stream is end. It is always a good thing that you can give us some indications what exactly it is. Yeah, um, exactly. Um, so that that is a very important thing, and we re really appreciate uh, the feedback from from you guys. Yeah, and it's it's one of these things, as you know, it's it's you, there's so much you can actually go into and, and cover on those type of things. Exactly, exactly. That's why I just I just want to say that to begin with, I I, I really hope that uh, we we can have a uh, uh, get get this a uh, uh, thing uh, like going to ask our audience first because the last basis. I mean, this is a huge topic. I mean, we only talk about nice school of force. We have to talk about some of the traditional uh, uh, social values and customs, which could be even having a bigger impact. So um, that's why I believe that um, it is a good idea to ask our audience what exactly what what want us talk about. Yeah, absolutely. So I was just obviously just te checking on the the social media. Anyway, so moving ahead, obviously there's the stuff on the CCP against actor actress conduct, uh, the plastic surgery, the beginning of the cultural revolution, uh, 2.0. So, I mean, in, in terms of this whole thing on the Chinese Communist Party against the actor and actress conduct, w what's that in relation to? Well, that's the most uh, interesting point because, well, uh, what happened is that recently they tried to implement uh, a new thing that basically will control um, what what people were going to, I mean, to be specific, the actor and actress on how they conduct their plastic surgery. Now, you may ask, look, there are some crazy people, for example, like uh, 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 like Michael Jackson. In that sense, I'm not saying that uh, in, in Western world, who are, we will all agree that they have spent a, a lot of resources or whatever that it is, you know, to uh, conduct plastic surgery. Surely, on paper, it looked like a good thing, isn't it? But the trouble is, how do you develop plastic surgery? Mm. Now, I mean, well, technically speaking, if you're trying to slim down yourself, it's kind of a kind of a plastic surgery. What we're gonna do then? I mean, what what would be the boundaries in order to stop them for the for, for for being called not as a plastic surgery? You 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 see what I'm asking? You know, the issue that we're having here is that the terms are too vague that they could easily to be exploited as a way to controlling people. Um, I suppose. I mean, I mean, like what 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 you're basically saying with regards to because I know you mentioned is obviously in relation with that is the sort of brainwashing you're kind of seeing that to an extent. 
even here in the West and all this plastic surgery and whatever people feel that you know they're, they're kind of conditioned there's, there's ones who are conditioned to believe that they need to change themselves and then it starts to destroy their identity I don't know if you know that's the case with the Chinese Communist Party is it a case that they just basically want to destroy people's identity their, their, their initial you know to blur the lines or something is, is that what kind of what you're, you're arguing Yes, of course, no question about that. In my perspective, because, one, you highlight a very, very um, important thing. And uh, how to shape yourself, okay? For example, like, now you've been defined that you cannot or you can only shape in certain ways, which is a very important thing. Um, because, I mean, just like North Korea, of course, they are giving you a certain specific types of the, like, a hairstyle, whatever it is, that you can do it. So it's kind of like a uh, psychologically they are nudging you towards being restricted and controlled. And that is exactly what they're planning to do. And um, this is the, the first one, brainwashing, which I absolutely agree. Secondly, there is a potential that they're trying to uh, kick aside another cultural revolution. Because not many people actually notice that, that if you are last time talk about cultural revolution, the beginning of cultural revolution, now, actually, how the cultural revolution, usually every time it, the borderline that it begins, mm. is that when there was a critic, uh, a, crit, a cultural critic, like like uh, a criticizing about a play, it was a play, it's about that one, it was like a minister in the Ming dynasty, okay, it, between the uh, uh, 12th and the uh, 17th century, basically, uh, sorry, excuse me, for, uh, 14th to 17th century, excuse me. Is a minister called a high ray in Mandarin or Hoi, so in Cantonese. What ha happened is that um, he was a very uh, uh, clean official. He's not corrupted, but because due to Mito and the late Ming Dynasty, he was very corrupted. So he lost his job because of that. Hmm. So actually, they, the critic was implying that, you know, remember last time what I've said? Then, if, if if you are criticizing um the the uh, uh your, your Chinese pol politicians, they usually mm -hmm. what we call the uh, implications using the past to borrow the present. Back then, when this play was wrote in 1960s, it was implying that Mao dismissing one of his field marshal, field marshal De Huai Pang, the guy who actually criticized the uh, uh the uh, so-called uh, the uh, Great Leap and all this kind of uh, uh, stuff, you know, yeah. that go horribly wrong. He actually quite passionate about the criticize of that, okay, about how how failure it is and how Mao is going horribly wrong, all of his policies. So it is a sense that actually the play was trying to push Mao to aside, despite Mao is already like sidelined as being a party leader only, but they want him to go completely out of the loop in in, in, in that sense. However, the critic was criticizing that why that you have to let Mao go. And, well, of course, now, after the, all of that, we knew that actually Mao is using that as a, wish, as a way to come back to power. So, this kind of using art to control things has a precedent before. If this is not going well, hmm. this could become the next style of cultural revolution. When I say well, I mean... I mean, going well for the NDC movement, of course. For people, well for, for people yeah. who might not be aware of of the the cultural revolution, like the the initial one, that, you know, was built up to the nineteen early nineteen sixties, and that of the Great Leap Forward. A big part of that, you know, would you say, is correlative to this of the whole political correctness and changing, trying to change the, the you know, manipulate words and meanings and all sorts all in an attempt to, to, to brainwash and whatever. I know that there was disastrous consequences but it's kind of like with the, you know, the, the book burning you saw in Nazi Germany or, you know, what you saw of taking down statues and all sorts and the likes of the Soviet Union. I know this had something in correlation to do with the Cultural Revolution. Uh, would you would you say this is essentially... Are, in, in other words, are you seeing any, any signs of that? 
Wait, now, first of all, I, I suppose that you're trying to uh, referring to the current st- situation, the Cultural Revolution back to here. Yeah. I do see signs of that. I mean, for example, you? like you torpedo the uh, the Bristol, the statue of the Bristol. I forgot the uh, uh. house, uh, the, the the guy's name. Now I know that guy is uh, having a uh, slavery issues, and I I'm not denying that I'm against slavery. Well, full disclosure, but I'm absolutely against slavery. The question is that we should be recognizing that one, this things does happen, and we need to recognize the history. Two, in fact, there has been a fault in whether in Bristol to vote whether there, there should be removal or not but 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 unfortunately for those people who support the removal that they believe in that they lose the vote but you doesn't mean that you can just simply torpedo all these kind of things this is absolutely nonsense you should win the argument but not trying to use a violence to do it and we this is the whole thing that's why I said this is this does have a sense of cultural revolution over there in my perspective I would even argue that um, the cultural revolution is kind of like in the worst of you know, we remember that after the French Revolution, we have the period of terror. Yeah. It is basically the Ring of Terror, really. But it is a Chinese version. Uh. That, that would be a, that, that that would be be, be be the way. Okay, we we'll we compare with it. Of course, um, their 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 course is another way. You know, the uh, terror, the Ring of Terror. They will argue that this is for the Republic, but in fact, well, we all know this for their own self uh, uh, con- of interest. Their ideas might be. Might be a little bit different, but their end game is very similar. Shall we? Yeah, say? I remember. I said I seen something the other day. You, I know you mentioned obviously here in the east. Uh, sorry, the the west, and obviously about that statue. I, I can't even remember the particular name of the the figure in history, but it's something to do with slave ownership. They just they kid on. That's essentially what it's about. They kid on to themselves. Well, this is the reason why we're kind of taking down these statues because oh, it's so offensive, you know what I mean? But the reality is, it's just basically to, to eliminate all history so that people cannot learn, you know, and especially to try and you know suppress national feeling and everything. And that was kind of one of the reasons why, you know, they went after Robert Le Bruce. I mean, what are they try to say that they just showed up at the Battle of Bannockburn, uh, Bannockburn Field, and and you know graffitied all over, you know, Robert the Bruce statue, Black Lives Matter and, and stuff like that. That they didn't understand who Robert the Bruce was. I mean, I don't I don't believe that for two seconds, you know, and this this is this is the, the, the thing, I mean and I did see in the United States of America that they had actually pulled in, you know, several statues that are quite quite prominent, especially with that to do with the Robert E. In yeah, America, they usually, which is ridiculous, by the way, because Robert maybe you actually notice that. Um, just interrupt. Robert Lee was actually first invited by the Union to lead the army, but because his home state actually was it, what considered as the South, okay, so he followed his home state to side with the uh, Confederate side. So uh, that's why he was respected by both sides, you know, because he, that's why he has his statue as so always around. That, and my, maybe, not maybe I should notice that, and then jump into the gun, obviously, not to mention about that. Now, of course, we are all against slavery, but not to mention about that. The, um, this, the main course of sovereign state is not about the slavery issues, as I always want to point out. Lincoln is hardly a hardcore abolitionist. What it's about is about the Federation controlling the, uh, 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 the, 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 the stakes level. That is the difference, um, which many people bury, I mean, or ignore that in one sense. Yeah, I can under I can more than understand uh, in terms of that in particular. But there there was something I s- <laughs> I seen, uh, and there there was something I can't remember if it was a particular game, or if it was a film or whatever it was. And essentially, because the Chinese Communist Party, now obviously this was something that was shown in China, and. They didn't like the ending of it, right? So what they did was they changed the ending to suit their own agenda that the government wins. You know what I mean? That the politicians win, and and that's that's kind of what I mean in relation to do that topic issue that you're speaking about with the cultural revolution. Uh, they 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 do manipulate certain things like that. I just it just came to my mind as you had mentioned about that. 
Oh yes, of course. Not to mention about that. For example, like uh, just to as a uh, one interesting point, um, if you're trying to um, like in the not in the past, still there. Um, if you are they 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 have the uh, intervention, like for example in Hong Kong, like in the same time past, you know, where during the British rule or early uh, the time of handover, you know the uh, you know the TV signals can transmit to the southern part of uh, of the Canton provinces, right? It just next to the border, you know. What they would do, they would interfere the signal at the point if they have something they do not like. Yeah, I can I can pretty much understand. So um, that is how how they how they run all these kind of things. Yeah, I got a comment earlier on. It's just the uh, it's the usual. I think I, I don't I can't even take this uh, individual, this particular individual, whoever it is, seriously. He says Scott definitely boring, and then says, uh, stereotypical Tory. I mean it. Just doesn't make sense. A Tory's a conservative. I'm a libertarian. I think my my channel name should give that hint away. Um, yeah, I, I don't even pay attention to people like that. They're kind of they're brain dead, so to speak. Uh, I'll just check quickly. You know, it's just to check on things like um, you know the social media. Shall I say if there's no anybody problem. that's commented or that? You know what I mean? That's what. Uh, just sure, sure, understandable. Yes, no problem. Uh, some I don't know. If, see, see, Facebook, man, it's just ridiculous, mate. It is. There's, there's, it says like there's two comments, but you, you only see like one comment. Their, their system's fucked. Uh, uh, have you got to show all comments? Let's say I don't even way. think there's an option that's popping up for that. That's what I mean. It's kind of it's just it's, it's typical of Facebook. It's probably censored the person whoever's commented or whatever. Uh, <laughs> God knows. And it's just it's just bloody typical. You know, it's kind of like the. In relation to what we were talking about there, it's kind of like with Facebook in terms of the, you know, the Facebook pages that you have. My Libertarian yeah, yeah. Scott page, I was posting a lot to that and I was noticing over a period of months that the viewership, despite how many, you know, things I was sharing, was going in decline. I'm thinking, yeah, you can see right through that. Shadow yeah, shadow banning and all sorts. And now you're seeing people getting put to the bottom of the pages and stuff like that. It's just this... And actually, in relation to that, again, with the, the Cultural Revolution stuff like that, there was um, a thing I read on Twitter, and it was this particular individual who works for Big Tech, right? He actually works for them. Uh, I don't know which... He didn't mention anything about who he actually works for, because obviously Big Tech is, you know, branches off into things like Google and... You know yes, all the rest of it, well, like yes, Facebook. Yes, although most of them are usually under a few uh, usual suspects, shall we say it this way? Aye, uh, so it was, it was basically this this you know guy actually yep, yep. has all the inside information because he works for big tech, and he was mentioning how it's full of these you know let's just say it they're, they're communists, right? It's full of these red shirt communists who really don't want to work. Uh, they've destroyed any incentive to improve anything, and 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 all the days they had these meetings, these constant meetings about how they're feeling and you know mental health issues and all the rest of this nonsense and you know and if you're feeling good, if you're feeling you know perfectly healthy, you know they'll target you as if you're a problem. Well, to I, them, I, as I if you're a threat to that extreme, but I would say that in this way. They have a pattern to to try to identify, shall we say, this way. Because, excuse me, what happened is that they can analyze because they have so many profiles of of ours, so they can analyze what people are, and they would they think potentially in their perspective have to be targeted. And then, if we unfortunately fall into this category or or almost fit into the category, then we will fix it, fit into this, and that is the whole issue that we're having. Hmm. Well, this is this is the thing, man. It's just uh, big tech is unfortunately littered with that, um, and all this censorship and all sorts. Christ, I I get banned in uh, what was it December eleventh there, and my ban was lifted in about January eleventh, and you know just the usual you know nonsense that for something minor, and it's, this is just it's just typical. So used to it, I've I've been faced with that many bans. It's just like unreal. 
and, and they seem to think that that's going to teach somebody a lesson. It just, it just doesn't. They open a can of worms. Well, uh, it's also a good reminder of how we've been uh, being uh, scientific, uh, psychologically articulated by all this kind of media. It's very important that we have to have uh, someone who can, we have to way to balance ourselves. Aye, uh, some someone th- Thomas has m- mentioned there. He says uh, on Facebook there is an all comments and most relevant Facebook comments are on the the latter by default, so change to all comments. Yeah, th- there usually is something like that, but when I actually went to the page thing, there's absolutely nothing there. It's like it, for for whatever reason being, I've kind of you know blanked it, and I'm kind of thinking to myself like, what's that all about? You know. It's not used to me, um, especially when I'm trying to see somebody else's comment and I only see Mike's, who basically said test from Facebook and that's it. Apparently there's a second comment there and I, I do apologise to it, whoever it commented there because I can't see it. Um, I, it is on Facebook, I probably saw that. It says that how different is the culture of between Han and the Hui. Ah, so that's right. the culture question. Um, <laughs> well, we probably... You want me to jump into it right now, or we can just leave it until the end of this session? Well, we could we could move on. Um, we we'll, we will get around to that. Okay, Brian. Okay, we'll, then we'll probably have to make make a note later. We will come back to you shortly. Okay, I'm in sound to, to to the guy who write the comment. Okay. Definitely. And of course, um, well, it's not the, the same. It's not the same on uh, what do you call it twelve. So that's kind of that. So anyway, on to the next. As you had mentioned something about the implications of the conflicting articles published on the flagship PRC CCP publications. What what was that you were you know speaking about? Well, I mean, um, it's very simple. Now, if you want to understand the um, politics within the PRC or CCP, there are three publications you probably have to read. The first is the People's Daily. I suppose we all know that by now. The second one is the PRA newspaper. I mean, uh, probably last time we talked about briefly. Well, the name of PR is very simple. It is newspapers from the military, for the military. And if you want to guess something about the military, then this is your paper. Let's say this way. <laughs> the third is the Kao uh, Si, or Mandarin Jiu uh, Shi, the magazine. It is uh, like a party uh, a magazine. It basically allowed the, uh, uh, the discussion between is Kao Si or Kao Jiu Shi. It basically means that find the issues, or find the facts, or find the idea. The name was actually named after Xiao Ping Tan when he famously said that, you know, the o- only way to ex- to, um, to uh, ex- uh, Yes, facts are the ways to uh, check whether this is the principle is right. You know, this is a f- very famous quote that he said. So that's why he said that it is a finding facts magazine. It is an implication of that. Now, recently we have saw some articles um, come from the, uh, the whichever the papers, but it is. But we we'll give you an idea that that first of all we have seen there is a conflict about the PR newspapers. They probably. Talk about, for example, the different military leadership or whatever that it is. They surprisingly omit. You know who? She himself. And that is serious. I mean, were you not going to uh, to talk about something that we're mentioning? She. I mean, we are not agree that in in the communist world, in whatever the communist world, well, well, you if you you will not mention anything about the military without mentioning your, the supreme leader. Not in the, no matter in the past in the Soviet Union, or in the current in CCP, within the PRC, they all may always mention about that. Now, the thing is that they decided not to. Now, that's a huge implication. Not to mention about recently, they even have an article in what I call, quote, audacity, end quote. Of course, it's not the internal real audacity, but in she's views is audacity. That they talk about that, you know, perhaps it's time the position has to be, um, like, uh, uh, like, given up, or, like, someone has to take it. I mean, that's serious. She is trying to get his third term. You talk about this kind of thing. You know, that is a huge signal. Of the PRA is not particularly keen in supporting Xi. Now I'm not. Now I'm making myself clear about that. The PRA doesn't keen in supporting Xi. Not necessarily means that they are anti Xi. Now this is a very important logic we have to um, understand. That means that they could be 
in my perspective, will argue that whoever, you know, end up to be the leader, they will follow the leader. So that will be the approach. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, previously we mentioned about that um, she was and is still continuing purging the ranks of the BRA to try to establish uh, some of the, his uh, own minions, shall we say in this way, you know, to be placed um, in the, uh, in, in to control the military. So that is the situation. And you have the Chu uh, Shi magazine that will publicly talk about that, you know, um, we have to talk about uh, how previously all the leaders like Xiao Bing Tang, uh, Zhe Mingjiang and Jing Tao Fu, their so-called Singapore model, how good they are. And they completely all mean, you know, Xi. I mean, that is too obvious. I mean, you talk about how good they are, and you, you, you ignore Xi, you know. This is quite obvious signal that basically the, um, the magazine itself is anti-Xi. Hmm. And by the way, they are all, 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 all uh, public articles that is supposed to be read by the CCP uh, members and the officials, okay? I uh, mean, about this People's Daily is a little bit different. Um, they have a newspaper article that is uh, mentioning how good that shopping Tan was. Um, and, and, then, and then a few days later, they talk about how she said correct some of the problems that Xiaoping Tang and Zhe uh, Mingjiang uh, and Jin uh, Tao Fu is. So they are quite, you can argue that balance in one sense. So they are basically do not know who they are going to follow. But the problem is very clear. Usually this time of propaganda media, they have a very coherent um, line. If you're uh, in the Western politics, we're going to describe this. The fact that they have starting to have a conflicting uh, lines, it only means one thing. There is a, not only there is a clear internal power struggle, but a very important thing this struggle is going to the end very shortly. Traditionally, we see this sort of things. Last time we see this kind of huge conflicting is probably about when Xiaoping Tang was getting back to power and, uh, and fighting in front of the different Maoists within the, uh, the within the CCP back then. By the time that these conflicts are being allowed to go, basically it just means that it is the result is coming out shortly. So that will. A very good indication we'll see in the coming March, the, the so-called two meeting, one of them is National People's Congress, the, the oh, I got the rubber stamp, that uh, parliament. What would they talk about? What would they do? And is there any personnel changes? I mean, obviously, we haven't re- re- reached to the alternative uh, 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 Congress of the CCP yet, as it will be in the coming September or October, November, whatever that it is, it will be in autumn time, you know, the time they keep swinging around, you know. You know, the, the, so I cannot give you what exactly the month it is, but there is a clear indication over here that um, something will ha- arrive shortly, and it will be drastical. Hmm. We should soon see who will win, but it's a very good indication to once again remind our friends and audience over here that the so-called one party, one dictator with the CCP hasn't reached yet, but if she gets his way. He will turn CCP into next North Korea. Yeah, I, I can understand. I mean, that's quite significant, and they they have. I've I've heard about all that. You know, sort of agenda where they're kind of wanting to move in that direction. You know, towards the full blown communism, what they were. You know, before uh, nineteen seventy seven, um, before Deng Xiaoping, and. I, I, I can understand then why they would, you know, try to bring about this, you know, well, the, the second cultural revolution and the, their agenda to push, you know, China in this direction. So I can see why that's quite significant, you know, especially with the sort of internal struggle that you're mentioning. And, and if Chi does get his way, then, you know, well. That's quite sad for, you know, not not just um, China, uh, for the people and and whatnot. It's bad enough as it is, but um, you know yourself, Hong Kong. Oh so. wow, Hong Kong. Wow, well, just to say, I wish it was a permanent lease, not a ninety-nine year lease. Shall we say it this way? Yeah, so we, we'll go on to the, you know... Later, th- yeah. You know, pretty soon. But, you know, as something else is mentioned, I know you've noted down about the stand at House News. Um, Tony Soy, Hong Kong Watch, 
Miles Wing Yu. Uh, sorry, I do. Miles Wen Gui Guo. Wing Wei. Wen Gui Guo. Let me pronounce it for you. Strano House News Authority Tony Zai. Uh, one group, Hong Kong Watch, another group. Miles Wen Gui Guo. One group, Apple Time slash New Town Dynasty Television. Um, um, uh, one group and Abu Luo. One group. Are they real dissidents or controlled oppositions? Yeah. So, it, what, what do you say about that whole thing? Especially about the dissidents and stuff like that? Now, we're going to chunk away the uh, 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 the Hong Kong Watch and Tony Soy Strand News and House News in the next topic, uh, mm. which will be related to Hong Kong, so we will be focusing on it yep. one by one. Mao's Wen Gui Guo. Uh, Mao's Guo or Wen Gui Guo. Um, He's named himself as a dissident. I do not know whether you noticed that or our audience noticed that. He actually, uh, now he came out as an anti C, and he talked about a lot of corruptions within the party, CCP. Understandably, because he was part of it, and he was part of the circle. He was a businessman, okay? So he's basically having all this, facilitating all this thing happening. Mm. And um, he even have, the, have a few joint sections, programs with Steve Bannon, you know? The former uh, Trump uh, advisor, you know, mm. strategist. Um, I'll talk about all these kind of things. Now, the reason that why I raise the question whether they are real dissident or control the opposition is... Now, no doubt that uh, Wen Gui Guo, Mao's uh, Wen Gui Guo, talk about a lot of NDC and NDCCP stuff. But coincidentally, all the corrupted CCP officials he named are all Xi's opponent. Hmm. Is that a coincidence? I mean, my question is that surely he should have a lot of knowledge of other um, CC officials apart from those who are NDC. So my the, the 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 issue is that why I want to bring it out is that they are controlled oppositions because what happened is that they are con- being controlled as a way in order to answering some of their their people back in. Uh, in the PRC, you're trying to create the propaganda outside. Now, you may ask, look, why create the propaganda outside? Now, this is the strategy we have to explain. This strategy is called export turn domestic consumption. Now, what does mean? Now, because if you leak this information within, let's say you are a CCP official, okay? You leak this information out within PRC. It's damaging to the CCP, right? It's direct hit, isn't it? But what if, because, you know, you have the great firewall, you know, to control people, there will be people trying to get out. You use a foreign media that is supposed to be a decent media, leak the information out, returning back to the domestic use PRC. Now, that is a different impact because, you know, it seems it's come from a decent media. You understand where I come from? Mm-hmm. So the impact is softer when you're trying to target your political opponent. That is a much better way. You understand where I come from? Yeah. So it's not direct heat. And these medias like Wen Gui Guo and Apple Times, you know, probably know that Apple Times, uh, you, you know that a lot of people share about it. And also the so New Town that Television, uh, New Town Dance Television. And that is another thing, you know, they have a link connection between uh, Falun Gong, okay? Now, I'm, I'm not against people practicing Falun Gong. I mean, this is the religious freedom, okay? The, the basic is a Qi Gong, really. I mean, it's not even a religion in a strictly span. It's a kind of a martial art or a Qi Gong. What you could call it. it's kind of a martial art. I believe I respect the right to practicing as far as you do not force people to practice. I mean, it's very important. And um, but they have to serve the same function. I mean, for example, like the 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 Apple Times, that they, they have one of their their news sites actually have like the number of more languages than the C that the CCTV, that the one that is they this as uh, the PRC is controlling propaganda machine. I mean, how enough that you have have the money to run all these kind of languages? Where does money come from, by the way? Hmm. Well, so that's why I always have theory that actually they're part of the CCP. Yeah. They're different factions of the CCP. But they've been used as a way to manipulate the uh, uh, dissident, uh, one, manipulate the dissident voice and opinions. Two, if they have to use a strategy of export and domestic consumption, the one that I just thought, the said, that would be the way of doing same for Abuolo Wang. That's Abuolo Wang. Wang is, is, is basically a website in Chinese. Abuolo website. It's a news website. We know there's a pro pro uh, Shanghai gang one, okay? There's a lot of bizarre things we, they, we, we talk about later. How the detail of some of these uh, people that somehow they just stay present, you know? It's clearly it's a leak. 
someone towards Nick towards them. I mean, let's face it. That's why. That's why I always argue that they are they are controlled oppositions, not real dissidents. Now, I'm not at any moment saying that they are not uh, useful. I mean, in fact, this is a very good example of how we can observe the CCP internal power struggle. Because they belong to different factions of CCP, so the things that are coming out will be meaning different times of attack. So we can actually have an understanding of what exactly is going on. Obviously, they can serve, uh, not exactly, but you know, kind of like have a rough idea, you know, because you never know what exactly is going on, let's face it. And also, this could be a vessel that they build for themselves, for these CCP officials. Because in the future, they can say that if they have to flee, you know, they can claim so-called political refuge. They can say that I have been, like, helping this son of so-called dissidents medias. I'm the person who set them up. You know, that cannot be helping for themselves to get the status and the political capital. Mm -hmm. That is the point I'm trying to highlight, because there's a common misunderstanding in my perspective that they believe in these unreal dissidents. I believe facts doesn't match them. So it's obviously a contradiction. Exactly. I mean, it's very simple. Where did the money come from? Yeah. Why you have such a close source about that? I mean, this doesn't make any <laughs> sense at all. I mean, I mean, I mean, that's that's the whole point. And um, obviously, um, 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 it's only to the uh, the, uh, the Strauss, uh, the Star News, the uh, House News, or Tony Tsai and those Hong Kong boys. But before we move on, do um, you have anything else to say here? No, I mean, I can I can pretty much understand. Especially, it's quite interesting with the sort of conflict and stuff, um, the contradictions there. Um, I suppose it's just, it's really just a case that with regards to the interests of 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 Chi, and it, like you said earlier on with his agenda, if he was to get his way, you know, I would imagine there's going to be, in my opinion. There, there's going to be some sort of conflict of interest, division, um, but I think it's, it's, you know, it's interesting something that you mentioned about the, the dissidents. Wow, um, because the problem is that so many people claim to be these the dissidents, but they are not. Yeah. That's why I, I, I highlight In other words, what, what you're that. basically saying, it's just a, a fake face of it. To put yes. on a front, a show. Yes, exactly. And some, that's why I have to point it out. There's way too many people trying to claim they are, but in fact they are not. Right. I mean, that's why I, I, I believe I have to point it out. Because that will also explain in the future, remember, how they're going to be... How do you say? They will be used as a way to sway opinions. Okay, this I can This is very I can important see. because just like how... A good example would be how the nationalists in Scotland controlling the media to build the rhetoric. Yeah, so I, I suppose, I mean, here in this country, you do have... Take, for example, the whole thing that you see all the time with the Conservatives and the Labour Party, and, you know, it's like... You, you end up every four years, but it's practically the same thing. Um, although I wouldn't say that they're exactly the same. Um, but to a certain degree, you only have to look at things, there's been mere authoritarianism, mere nanny statism, regardless of whether it's been SNP, you know, it's that whole thing with the controlled opposition and, and whatever, it's just, I don't think there is a real opposition, and if there is, it's just like, it's so minute that, you know, sadly nobody votes for them, and it's, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> I know you're you're kind of screwed in this country, you know what I mean. So I I can understand what you're saying, especially especially with regards to China. <laughs> yes, of course. That's why I, that's why I highlight the point. You know, when when I say that, you definitely get the point. You know. Yeah, because people people will fall for that. There are there are sadly people who will fall for that and think it's oh it's an opposition, but. Really, the same, same agenda. And I'm moving towards this, the topic that we we'll to talk about, because the next one we talk about is Hong Kong and lost course. I mean, that back to the so-called Strand News House, Strand or House News or Tony Zai and Hong Kong Watch. We mm -hmm. talk about uh, Tony Zai first. I mean, this is the person who established Strand News and the House News. 
。Um, the、uh, sorry, Star News and House News. I always thought there's another one, but anyway, what happened is that if you, if any of our audience remember that the Star News and House News, they have been recently shut, and they claim that basically they have been shut under political pressure. I don't deny that, but the question is, the person who run or and establish all this kind of thing is already suspicious at the first place.、Mm-hmm. The man Tony Zai. He established that、um, the、uh, house—I forgot which one first. So I forgot standing or housing. But then they later they fold and then do it again. I mean, this person doesn't have a good track record. I would even argue that, in one sense, that they are basically、uh, how to say attracting the people that who are actually. Have a keen interest in trying to do something, and but however, turn it, turn it around as a way to co- have to control the list and then sell to the relevant authorities. That will be the, my description. I mean, because、mm. this guy is, it's very simple. Fool me once is my fault. Fool, fool, fool me twice. No, fool me once is your fault. Fool me twice is my fault, isn't it?、Mm. Why someone can after the first time? They fail, they do it again, the second time. That's wrong. You know、mm-hmm. why this thing people are still supporting them? You see, in my perspective, he and the people that he is representing is just basically some some some, some and another faction of CCP. They're creating, trying to control all these kind of things, and they try to have a manipulation of all these media. That's what we back to the SNP nationalists. How they control the media and how they control rhetoric, yeah,、um, as a way that in the future they will how to use it,、mm-hmm. and that's why I say the Hong Kong is a lost cause. I would argue. He, here's the thing. I mean, it's quite interesting because in relation to that, and I know, I know you're saying they're obviously trying to, that you know, control the media there in Hong Kong, using it as a tool, especially when when they've got the power over those sort of things. They can sort of manipulate the population in a certain way and whatever. But when you when you speak about their take, for example, here in Scotland, I class to to me I classify nationalists not as people who support the free market. I I don't I don't classify you know Scottish independent supporters kind of in the same bracket in in my opinion with nationalism. I think because, to me personally, in my opinion, a, a nationalist is, you know, collectivist to to some extent. But、um, with regards to the sort of take, for example, the Scottish National Party controlling the media, yes, to a varying extent, they got away with for several years with you know conditioning and, and brainwashing to lead people up the garden path. But there's only so long that, that there's there's only so much and so long that can last, because eventually down the line, people begin to see economic reality that contradicts them. Things start to prop up that create so many different problems, and you're seeing that right now、uh, with regards to the SNP.、Uh, for example, just take take as an example the problems with the NHS.、Um, it's it's impossible. Pe- people. Although they don't understand that it's not a case that you can just change the government and that's just magically, you know, going to make the problems just disappear. But she's facing serious backlash right now.、Um, so th- there is only so much that 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 can last. But I do understand what you're saying. Like from this, as you're saying about something about the Hong Kong Watch, using media as a means to, you know, control、uh- and manipulate. Well, the Hong Kong Watch is another thing that I want to talk about because they claim they are organization is, is supporting Hong Kong. They know. I have to tear their face right now because I have been there. Quite a lot of people who believe in the they are. I didn't. I actually, when they try to start the protest already, I already sense the problem. They are what I call、um, stability maintaining office. They basically want to maintain status quo after after 1997. Now, I want to make it clear. The status quo pro after 1997 is not 
the thing that most of people think of. They are gradually declining the freedom, and basically, as I always said, abandoned we the British Chinese of in Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. This is not the way they should be doing. I'm sure that we can all agree about that. The way they should more put more put forward should be recognizing the British Chinese in Hong Kong, the BNOs mainly, and the right round the right and center in the UK. They want to remain status quo. Why? When I actually confronting the the Hong Kong Watch dozens, if if not hundreds of times online, they always dodge the question on BNO. I even confronting to one of their founder, Benedict Rogers online. Hmm. He dodged it. Now you see, I always said that you know when you you know uh, uh, Milton Freeman also basically I'm quoting Milton Freeman. Yeah. You have to judge the policy on results, not their intention. Their results was when I conflicting confronting Hong Kong Watch is that they want to talk to be no questions. Then I knew that they are not truly intended to do anything really because they do not want to change. They want to maintain status quo. They do not want oh the British dangerous do not want to wave all down. They do not want to lose all these kind of things. That's their purpose. They only change their tone until the BNO question becomes too obvious. They cannot stop, you know, ignoring it. You see why I'm coming. Hmm. That's why I said this is an organization that we have to remember if anyone who is interested in Hong Kong, they are not as good as what believing these people they are. Hmm. They are absolutely not. And that is the reason that why I would highlight. That is also I want to come in to explain that why... Uh, Hong Kong is a lost cause that we're going to go and talk about. For example, like people like um, Nathan mm-hmm. Law, you know, one of the so-called uh, leading protesters. Well, I'm pretty much sure they're trying to form an exile government. But if I may dare to say he's too incompetent to form one. Hmm. Now, I know that this is not fashionable opinion. But he, so and so do um, Edward Learn. The guy who basically invented the slogans for the uh, uh, for for this uh, for the uh, just for the uh, 2019 uh, so-called uh, movements, they are both both of them are from mainland China. Okay, so uh, now you may say that from mainland China means what? They are only uh, come to Hong Kong after 1997. They were never British Hong Kong Chinese. Now mm. I have some people who were will involved in the campaign will go off record to such will even call them. That as a communist spies or agent, an <laughs> incompetent one. Mm-hmm. Now I will not rule them out as a, a income uh, as as a communist agent, but they're certainly incompetent. Hmm. They're absolutely incompetent. I mean, I mean to, to be quite honest with you, I mean they are giving them the platforms, for especially Nathan Law. I mean, he can go to America, he can go to the Harold School. I mean, this, these are not places that you, as an ordinary folk, can get into and to go give a talk about it. You know. They are all arranged. It. I mean, that's why they now they some people even suggested they have have an overseas uh, uh, so-called Hong Kong Parliament. I mm-hmm. mean, you see, that's how they try to pop up an exile government. Because once they have an exile government, then they can control the rhetoric. Back to the point about the media. You think this so-called dissident opinion, dissident, but a my personal control the opposition, manipulate the rhetoric, and after that to achieve something that is not as best interest of the UK government or the British Chinese of in Hong Kong, the BNOs. So I would say we will have to watch this space very carefully because someone is designed the whole mechanism and trap to try to take this interest out from British government. Or even, act, in fact, it will be working against the British Chinese interests in Hong Kong. Hmm. So that's why I, I believe Hong Kong is a lost cause because it's way too complicated. The complicated is not a problem. The problem is that the British government, one, they do not have the appetite to do it, two, they do not have a they do not have a clue to do it, three, they do not have the people who have a clue to do it. I think with us you know, it's unfortunate as us to say this, but um we've got a political class that you know has no backbone in my eyes. Christ, you're you're seeing that over the conflict and the the problems. I, I do understand that it's quite complex and it's not as simple and it's to do with this whole thing with Russia and Ukraine and and all the rest of that. But I don't. I, I really don't believe that Boris Johnson. You know, he's he's a nice enough guy in my opinion, but he's not. 
<laughs> he isn't quite living up to being. <laughs> no, I, to be honest, if that is always, I, I, I want him to go. Period. Let's say it this way. Let's say it this way. He, he is not what someone that I, I, I voted for. You know, this guy yeah. was supposed to be a. This guy's supposed to be a, a, a post uh, handgun ban. Mm-hmm. This guy's supposed to be against in tax. This guy's supposed to be talk about exactly. tax cuts. I mean, this guy's supposed to be about <laughs> the regulation. I mean, he's doing everything almost exactly opposite. <laughs> exactly. Let's say it this way. Exactly. He's be- he's basically behaving like a he's behaving like a lefty. He's too far to the left for me. <laughs> or yes, you is. know how it feels, how it how it honestly feels, and I think that's. That's kind of it, it. Doesn't help, you know, with the current situation, and especially the the relation. Now, I admire and I respect the fact that he at least did something with regards to you know getting many of the Hong Kong people here, you know, over to this country. Um. I think I can't, I can't remember how many it was in particular or whatever it was. Well, it will be uh, that the those who are qualified there will be more than three million. Let's say this way at least, but it depends on how many would take up the offer. I mean, it could take some time to take up the offer. I mean, let's face it, this is during pandemic time, so yeah. um, it will come slow. But ultimately, it could be more than three million. That's yeah. The bottom. Yeah, I, I and I've got I'll I'll hold my horns up to that and I'll say you know I respect that. Um, but in so many other areas, I, I, I just don't think he has, I, well, I don't think he's got the backbone. <laughs> no, so. he doesn't. Let's face it, he doesn't. So, he doesn't. So when it comes to stoning up against China, you know, I, I, you, you, you don't know what you get with Boris, is what I'm saying. Now, let me tell you this way, since we talk about the uh, uh, issue, because... Um, well, no, no, we'll keep it in this way, because we'll talk about this uh, so-called spy gate next but do come back to the point we'll talk about some of the very very interesting stuff within all the three major parties and all about the spy gate we'll come back to that let's say mm-hmm. this way so let's just check two seconds my eyesight's horrible um sorry i just Something you, I don't know if you've already mentioned about the Epoch Times and your tongue the, the dynasty. Yes, uh, so. e- Epoch Times. I probably mentioned about. It. I, I highlight the issue that um, they are control oppositions and their their funding is. Yeah, is, yeah. Don't know. We don't know where the money come from. This is very important, yeah. and um, that's why I, I highlight that. I mean, the funding is bizarre. I mean, the the, the funding supported is very very. Uh, Questionable, shall we say, this way. And you've briefly touched, well, you've kind of briefly touched there on the, is the Hong Kong the, a lost cause and whatever? And It is, because yeah. there's so many complicated things. Plus, there are too many what I call China hands, but not Sinologist yeah. systems. China hands are the people who claim they understand China, but they do not have a clue. They just basically have been a few years, pretended that, oh, they understand what it, what it is, probably speak the language, but they do not have proper sign knowledge. Hmm. Who have the knowledge, who understand the mindset, who really know what is going on, and that's the problem. That's why, I, it's a sad thing, I, I do not want to say Hong Kong is a law cause. I never believe in that the handover should have over. Not a chance. I believe in that the handover should never be handed over. And I believe in that should have been a referendum back then, yeah. of course. I've I've long argued, and you know I've I believe that myself, and I do, you know I I do feel sympathy in that regard. Uh, I think to a varying extent, like I say, with the, some politicians lacking a backbone or whatever. But I think at that time, with regards to because you've got to remember, China was a and it was an economy that was closed off to world trade and then there was the period when I remember the United States of America and Britain you know began trade relations with China and it was in their interest to a varying extent well just to interrupt a point basically because Henry Kissinger's policy which is ridiculous you know I always ask a question I mean Henry Kissinger will always talk about the so called uh, balance of power 
Now, the problem is that they are against the Soviet Union, which is one collectivist country. Mm -hmm. However, the PRC is also a collectivist country. Yeah. Well, the question is that what makes them believe that one collectivist country is more trustworthy than the other one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, th th I think that was gullible. That I, always ask. I think the, the only people... reason... I think the only reason why was because of something unique, and that was Deng Xiaoping at the time. It, it, you know, there, there was something unique compared to the Soviet Union, you know, f for its time period, because I, I don't think this is not that I'm aware of, you know, it wasn't until Boris Ye Yeltsin had, you know, visited, like, one of the uh, American... Uh, supermarkets that he was kind of blown away by it but I don't think the Soviet Union quite had uh, a Deng Xiaoping so to speak and he, he was someone to a varying extent that carried out strong privatisation to you know after 1977 he began making changes and then you would see riots and, 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 and whatever I think they see because eventually, from what I remember, the documentary because there's quite an interesting one, and whether it's true or not, whether this is true or not, because this was, and you know myself, I don't trust the yeah, BBC yeah. for as far as I can throw a stick. Um, but they they had a documentary on the BBC, and I, I'll give credit where due. They are very good at creating you know documentaries and stuff like that, but I don't hold full trust. Um, but it was one called the Capitalist Revolution. Now, of course, I know it wasn't exactly capitalist or whatever. Uh, however, Deng Xiaoping, to a varying extent, had made a change. But the co the Chinese Communist Party didn't like what they were seeing because they felt power has been taken away from them. And it's why it's kind of it's this kind of it's well it's been corporatist um, since that you know, sort sort of period, so to speak, because they just don't want to let go of power. But you are right, they shouldn't have held so much trust, especially regarding trade and stuff like that, with, you know, China, uh, so to speak. I, th I, th I think in time that's pretty much proven the case. Um, and I feel Donald Trump, although I'm not the biggest fan of protectionist tariffs, I feel Donald Trump was actually right in that sense. Um, and I wasn't exactly the biggest fan of Donald Trump and certain things, but I could hold my hands up and say there are certain things he did right. Um, and that, that that's the whole thing with regards to China over time. It kind of... It, 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 it basically abused its position. Um, but you've got to remember, at that time... China was kind of wanting, or, or or shall I say, Britain and the United States kind of saw an opportunity, and I don't know if you would use the word gullible, but believed that, that they could make a change, and I don't fault, you know, either Britain or the United States for that, but the other issue and the, the very reason for why Britain would have been in that position with regards to China is for economic reasons because see after the mess the heavy nationalisation caused in Britain the economic mess that was left behind because of socialism that they tried to blame on Thatcher Britain was in a very very dependent shall I say a dependent state upon China because Britain could not afford to be this manufacturing driven based economy. There was a long transitional period moving away from that um, moving away from that manufacturing driven based economy to the consumer driven based economy, which is why so many of the industries were going under, so many jobs were changing. And it wasn't so much, it, in other words, people thought, oh, it's all Margaret Thatcher's fault. But it had nothing to do with Margaret Thatcher. It was uh, to do with the times. You could say government intervention over a period of time would have had its influence. But it certainly wasn't the fault of Thatcher. And as a result of that, Britain was kind of 
to an extent, dependent upon getting China to produce for them because it was on it was in their own economic interests because it would be cheaper for Britain to get China to do to to produce for us if you understand what I'm saying. Yes, yeah, basically uh, outsource all the factoring process out. Correct, correct, and and it, that that was kind of the, the reason why, and I I think that's unfortunate and as sad as it is it's kind of like one of those ultimatums Britain was kind of caught between that it's kind of like, you know do we, you know in such an economic mess cut things off entirely and I, th- I think that maybe there was a bit of a gullible element that they thought China would you know, change maybe they, they did think that but I think within time it bloody well proved otherwise. They've they've got no interest. In fact, like you say with this whole thing, and 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 with regards to Chi and their agenda, <laughs> they, they're going down the same path. Exactly. And, Mao and and the Kim family yep. did in North Korea. Yeah, and 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 that was a that was a catastrophe, and. Uh, it's 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 so so sad, um, you, you know. It's just history has a terrible habit of repeating itself with regards to this. You kind of you just know where it goes, um, and it's a very very sad situation. Like I say, disappointing because as, as you mentioned about Hong Kong, I mean, um, I think Britain again. It's not really got the backbone to stone up against China, um, especially when the lease came to an end in '97. But I, I do agree. I think I would have, in my personal opinion, <laughs> I, I I would have stuck to the guns and and kept on to Hong Kong. <laughs> well, at, at that knock will be a very good time for me to jump in. <laughs> the biggest problem is that we know it's kissing Jeff. Because they they refuse to back us, they refuse to back us. That's the biggest problem. Was that to do with Henry Kissinger? Yeah, of course. Because it's a Henry Kissinger divided strategy that basically get to get PRC to against the Soviet Union. Mm-hmm. So in order to well, we are calling some of the Russian the, the class with the, the diplomatic cables. It is basically rightly believing that in order to sweeten the deal, they put Hong Kong on the table. Hmm. So they refuse to back us. Right, I see uh, what you it's mean. British. Because, because let's face it, if you want Hong Kong to be defendable, you need NATO. Yeah. And we knew that NATO can defend that. West Berlin is a very example that we've proven to it. It's perfectly possible. I mean, West Berlin is, let's face it, is the, is, is in the eastern Germany, the Soviet Union occupied side, within a small, tiny fashion uh-huh. of the little piece of land within the eastern Germany. And the allies, the NATO, managed to defend it. We fa- we, the problem is that the whole NATO and American is gone. They're not backing mm. us in America. They're, yeah. not, me, they're not going to back in the UK, in Hong Kong. And it's all Henry Kissinger's issue. Because Henry Kissinger is trying to define the so-called balance of power. The problem is that, one, as I said, that the ideological conflicting messages raised. Mm-hmm. Two, his judgment on PRC is proven to be fatally wrong, or in fact, at that point, is already wrong. Because many people thought that so-called Chaoping Ten Dynasty uh, One Country Two System is a brilliant strategy, right? They were fossil, but if they even have some history knowledge about that, you know Tibet, right? After 1950s, and they have so-called liberation, and and they actually have a One Country Two System before, until around like 10 years later, they destroy everything. You know who was the person who struggled to deal with Dalai Lama back then? Of hmm. one country, two system. You know who hmm. designed that? The structure. You know, it's maybe, I believe it's called 13 point treaties back then. You know who designed that? No idea. Xiaoping Tang. He has a track record to break them. Is that obviously. Who, who is it? Say his name again? Xiaoping Tang. Or Xiaoping, Xiao, Xiao Xiaoping well, Tang. That, because Tang is his surname. Or tongue, depends on what you want to pronounce his name. 
the whether it is in the traditional Cantonese pronunciation right, right. or in the Mandarin pronunciation, the supreme leader for the open door policy. I would need to look him up because I don't think I've heard his particular name before. No, but I mean the man who opened door policy, Xiao uh-huh. Ping, Teng, Teng Xiao Ping. Right. You just said that. You remember the guy in after 1979 who get the power of the CCP and then and then lead the PRC for well, the open d- door Deng, policy. Well, I think I think you mean because I've I've said the name Deng Xiao Ping. Actually, it depends on how you pronounce that. Right, it so I, I see where you're you, coming from. You, it's well, it's and, a case and, that... And also, it depends on how anagolized it is, you know? Right. Anagolized is... <laughs> Roman, Romanize it, or in one sense, you know? Because it's <laughs> different pronunciations. It really <laughs> depends on how you pronounce it. Yeah, that, it that's... Is, it is called... His surname is... Teng. First name is Xiao Ping in Mandarin. Right. So if you based on English... Audience, audience, it will be Xiao Ping. Uh huh. Deng. Or, you right. understand where I come from? Right. I thought it was a different name there for a second because it's, you no, know, it's rearranged. The same person. <laughs> it, it's the same person. What happened is that the same person had created the 132 system on Tibet and break it himself and then he's doing the exact strategy mm-hmm. in Hong Kong. That's interesting. I didn't, I didn't actually know that. Not many people, even Western names, don't even notice that. I mean, how many people even... This is exactly the problem I talk about. You uh-huh. know, how many people aren't really uh, understand, you know, what happened in the past with the CCP? Mm-hmm. I mean, also the Chinese history. I'll correct myself, it's not a 13-point agreement. It's 17-point agreement. I, I missed a few points, okay, to clarify the point. Uh, I will send you the... Now, I know it's a Wikipedia, but I will send you the link over on, on Skype so, so you, will, you, can, you can have a reference yourself. Mm-hmm. So there's a seven point seventy point agreement. It was actually an agreement drafted by uh, uh, Teng Xiaoping, you know, the guy for the open door policy, and not many people actually know that. Yeah. He's a man who proposed it as an architect of this. So he's a, he's a very big in- and that's the thing because, and it's like I say, I don't take and this this is the issue, Mike. I don't take the the BBC you know word for word right I'll give them credit where due they have a, a an excellent service for providing top quality content in terms of their their creativity and their documentaries and all sorts and they've probably done ones in North Korea and whatever and some things I've kind of you know sat back and think and thought to myself that's unusual for the BBC to come out with something like that, and, and one of them was, of course, that documentary, uh, China's Capitalist Revolution. You won't be able to find it on YouTube now. It used to be on YouTube. You could probably find it if you research it on, you know, the search engine. I don't know if it's accessible that you'd be able to watch it. If you do get the opportunity to, it's quite an interesting documentary. But the way that they paint Deng Xiaoping, or as you know, Xiaoping, Deng, t- 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 that should be the egg Xiaoping Deng, or, or this is the correct order because Deng is his surname, family name, just like how we put out English in English we put our surname at the end, right? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> forget my pronunciations. It's, it's, That's okay. Um, just like I put your English name. That's probably fine. <laughs> okay, no problem. I, I, I put English name a hell of a lot, so please do go ahead. No problem. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I've I've kind of butchered it already, but um, but in terms of you know that guy alone, the, the way that they paint him was as this, you know, I, I I don't know if they were kind of in favour of him, but he was, you know, he was painted as a heroic figure, shall I say, uh, maybe I'm picking up wrong, because there was one point in the documentary later on where he left, I think it was after, I, I, I don't know if it was after that, you know, 
riot of the late 1980s. You know, the, the Tiananmen, I can't remember, was it the Tiananmen Square or something you call it? Yeah, that was square, and the, that riot, it, he doesn't left, he only left in 1990. This will be a, a big deep dive for the next bloody two, an hour or two about yeah. all the politics struggle if you're going to talk about that, but... <laughs> because, because it was round about that period that he, I think he disappeared for like a couple of years, it's, it mentioned. And the way that the documentary had put it was was basically, you know, to say there was a strong divide between the interests of what Deng Xiaoping wanted and that of the Chinese Communist Party. But I think what it was, was that... That was quite a, yeah, a good we, spin, shall we a, say. After a couple of years of him having disappeared, well, he didn't really disappear, he, he went off, I think he was living in some sort of back he, country, but... He, he's, he's still the uh, back controller until 1992, we usually argue, that 1992 he really started retiring. But he still yeah. have huge influence. Yeah. At one point, the former president, Zhe Mingzhang, was even considered to be torpedoed by Xiaoping Tang, because... He can, Xiao Bing Tang is considered uh, 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 Zhe Mingjiang is too pro-collective style in that sense. Too much government intervention. He was one time tempting to pull another puck again. You understand where I come from? But end up he didn't. And after that, then he died in 1997. Okay. But but go ahead first. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's quite interesting. Because it was something, you know, along the lines that I think he returned or something, but I think they came to some sort of um, I don't know if the words truce. I do apologise. Um, they came to some sort of an agreement, so to speak, a compromise. Uh, and and the way they kind of painted the documentary was that uh, the Chinese Communist Party. You know, they didn't really want to let go of you know the communism, so to speak. Oh, they I'd... never want to let go, to be honest. So, with you. They... and 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 that's why that's the very reason why I find it intriguing. From what you've told me, because if if true, you know he kind of laid this the, the he sowed the seeds of a very big problem you see today with regards to China. Now, first of all, a, a lot of things I have to say. Now, I might miss some of the points we'll discuss it later because I want to like to go through the ideas. Now, first of all, uh, uh, Teng Xiaoping or Xiaoping Deng, in that sense, he. Now, it depends on whether you consider him as a hero. Now, let me pick up uh, that just drop a book. Let me pick up something first. Yeah, th uh, thanks for that because obviously, like I he, say, he was he was considered a hero. But the trouble is that he he is technically speaking, he isn't. A hero, and, and now he's a hero, and in one sense he rescued the Chinese economy. Uh -huh. Shall we say in this way? Uh, but the problem is that he he's not as heroic as you saw. Yeah. Okay. BBC as wouldn't hero, tell. He, he's turned around the economy, correct? <laughs> yeah. He trying to solve the corruption crisis. Yes. He didn't massively privatize things. Okay. To on the record, he okay. suggests like a out. He's doing some very interesting things. He allowed, he free out the uh, people to let them to do their own things in free market ways. Uh huh. Companies still, a lot of, a hell of companies still stay on, okay? But they will start to give out and sell some of them out. Or right. sometimes they'll sell out. For example, land. They tend to sell. They said, look, we'll give you the piece of land you rent it. Right. Rent it from us. You, you do your own stuff. You understand what I mean, okay? Right. Government's still, still in their control like a, to, to an extent. But but it's still kind of like a liberation of the market, if you understand what I mean. To but some extent, kind of yeah. A, to make some yes, he this is a huge jump. Uh -huh. He's trying to open the door. He 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 create all these special economic zones, like the free something like the free ports these days in the UK. Okay. So they extract extract people in, cutting taxes on that these areas, they stimulate the growth, give it very good terms. He he does do very he turn the economy around very quickly. Uh huh. So he, he's a hero in that sense, but he's yeah. not as a superhero that will be, oh, one, two, three, <laughs> burn the whole new book. Not that type of person it is. He still have a firm belief in political control. He's still believing in the power has to be maintained. That's why we call it the Singapore model. He's a firm believer of Singapore model. 
the A1989 Riot is, or the, is mainly depends on the because of the government corruption. He originally wanted to use this as a way to um, uh, really kickstart the anti-corruption campaign, but he was widely believed to be mis misjudged the situation. He thought the 1988 not real will be another cultural revolution because someone fed him false information. Okay, some will argue. So he thought it would kind of cultural a cultural revolution towards him. So he decided to crack down. Of course, he's very keen to have a firm control of the of of, of politics uh, within the CCP. So he believes to pick up someone that uh, uh, that is truly um, how do you say uh, committed to maintaining the power of the CCP. That's why when uh, 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 he's supposed to be successor. That is, um, oh, let me forget, Zhu Yang Zhao's uh, predecessor. Let me forget his name. Uh, that's a problem. I have too many names in your brain, and you suddenly, hmm. um, Yao Bang Hu. Yes, he was supposed to be uh, nominated as the as as as, as the predecessor uh, in uh, 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 um, after 1986 or 1987. I forgot exactly which year it is, but. Because Wu Yao Bang has a uh, Yao Bang Hu, because who was his real name, okay? Because he have a tendency to try to go for political reforms, so he been aced quickly, okay? Of course, there's someone um, uh, putting um, how do you say someone uh, 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 feeding in bad information to or, or, or reports back to Xiao Bingtan to suggest that he has to go, and then uh, Zhu Yang Zhao even even getting worse because he's a he, he, he's a democratic. Uh, 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 decide to reform is even bigger, you know. Mm. So he has to be get rid of. So that's why you got Jiaming Zhang. The problem with Jiaming Zhang is one both political and economic closed down. Right. That's why Xiao Bingtang was one point even considered to sack uh, uh, Jiaming Zhang because well, I mean Xiao Bing, let's face it, he's still a giant in the CCP back then. You know, he yeah. can s eliminate whoever that he doesn't like. Shall we <laughs> say it this way? Okay. Yeah. So uh, he. He has considered that, but after 1992, Xiao Ping uh, received enough assurance um, from Jiaming Zhang to say that he will maintain the Singapore model. So he wasn't being aced. Right. So that is the thing. So so he was in a hero to turn the economy around. Yeah. The but the problem is that he's not as hero as he is that's supposed to be the ultimate democratic savior. No. And the rule of Bernard. No. So that, that makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, it's it's obviously I don't know because I would need to rewatch over the the BBC documentary, but I don't think the BBC documentary goes into the information that you somewhat provided, which I thought you know that's quite interesting, um, especially with, regarding the guy. I'm not I'm not going to say his name because I just I've already butchered his name <laughs> enough as it is. <laughs> but um, I got a question there from. My friend JD McFarland, as he states, uh, or he asks, so let's say, was Deng Han Solo. Oh, no, sorry, what the fuck am I saying? Han Solo? That's something out of fucking Star Wars. I do apologise. Uh, well, well, Han, Han Solo, it's my fucking Han eyes. Han is a one of the. <laughs> he's a Han Chinese, basically. Um, I understand where I've come from. He says, what was Deng Han also? Uh, have all the CCP membership been Han? Not necessarily. Uh, we have other uh, race like the uh, uh, Hui or, or Muslims or, or, or like the Manchulians. They can join the CCP. So it's not necessary, okay, to clarify the point. Um, it's, it's Chang Han. Of course he is. He was from the Sichuan province. The province is supposed to be eating a hell lot of spies. You know, so and also the home of the pandas. So that is the thing, and um, he. Th that's why you know in Peking these days you have a, a lot of people eating a spicy food or not a spicy food shop or Sichuan food shops because a lot of the top CCP officials, not all of them, a lot of them are come from the Sichuan province, hmm. the province of the pandas. So that's why there are a lot of these have shops over here in the Peking. Hmm. Quite interesting. Let's see if there's any few other <laughs> comments. Um, sell the land to Russia. I can't. That might have been a 
in response to something else I can't specifically oh, I, put I, context I get that, because it was, it was some, uh, I, I get that probably uh, is about, um, when we talk about the economic situation, probably the best way to, to, uh, uh, to, is to sell, sell the land to Russia. I, I suppose this is a joke. There's a comment. There's a comment by Martin Webb, which is interesting. Obviously, I don't know what it's in context to. You might, you know, know better. It's um, he says there are only nine Manchu speakers left alive. What would be that in relation to? Oh, I suppose that he, when we talk about the uh, Manchu, uh, while we're talking about Manchu, there's a race, not speakers, because a very good point that is made over here because. Um, there aren't hardly any, uh, uh, how would say, native Manchurian speakers these days. Because what happened was that the, you know, the Qing Dynasty, the last imperial dynasty, actually, for, well, for us, technically speaking, is a foreign invasion for China because mm. it's come from the uh, northeast of China, the Manchurian house, royal house. Yeah. Um, they are, they were an overseas foreign race that conquered the whole China. And mm-hmm. the funny thing is that after they have been moved into China, they have absorb the Chinese culture that they start to abandon their own culture. So um, there are less and less Manchurians actually can write and read Manchurians. And there are a very handful of them are native speakers. Now, basically, if I understand correctly in the PRC, if you are like like um, having a, a distinguished level because they have their own A-levels as well in the PRC, if you can, I believe it is, um, I thought it's Tsinghua or Peking University. Or, it's either one, I believe I can read one. If you have certain marks, you will be compulsory, you will be forced to study Manchurian language because they have to rescue the language. Because I could not, I, I'm not 100% sure whether there's only nine native speakers left alive. I don't have the data on my hand, but there are extremely handful of them. Mm-hmm. And these native speakers will, will, will be delivering lectures to these university students because in order to have someone to have understanding on the language before it's completely missing, because it was one time the ruling house language, but it just disappeared because it accepted the Han Chinese language so quickly. So it's a very good point. Uh, thank you very mm. much for raising this point. Um, I believe that is referring to what we've talked about, the Manchurian point about that. Well, that's something I, I honestly, I didn't actually know. I've, I've never, I, I don't pretend to know, you know, a lot of depth about, you know, the Chinese history and everything like that. I've, I've heard of Mandarin, you know, I, I know that's like, Correct me if I'm wrong. The main main language, correct? Yes, the Mandarin. Yeah. Now, this is a. It is that this again is a quite complicated question about Mandarin and Putonghua because Mandarin is well in a very linguistic uh, approach. It is kind of the official language. Right. What happened is that because you know um, the Chinese is so very big, right? So different people speak different language. Like Sichuan, they Sichuanese. Canton, you say Cantonese. Shanghai, you say Shanghainese. Okay. Or Hujian, you have the Hokkien, okay? So mm. what happened is that you need to have a common language to communicate, right? Mandarin was the, com- was the common language, the official language, during the Qing Dynasty time and, and, and then later, during the, uh, uh, the Republic of China time, back then when they're still ruling the whole uh, mainland China. The problem is that um, because other than that, um, they have a change in, uh, in terms of, uh, of language because when the PRs established, they changed it to... Uh, 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 Putonghua is a very similar one, but they change it to a new approach. So that's why it is kind of like a Mandarin is basically, it's not exactly the same as Putonghua, in say saying this way. Hmm. It's quite interesting. Didn't know that. So yeah, just checking any f- few other comments. As you say, Manchu's writing system is totally different to Chinese. Oh, well, absolutely, yeah. no question about that. Is um, if you go to um, oh, let me think about where you can see. So yes, if you go to some of the um, uh, Buddhist temples that was used to be um, 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 the Buddhist temples that used to be the praise that was the prince born. I mean, that was a prince born, yes. Then you will see that because they usually have turned these palaces, they have become a Buddhist temple. And you can still see some of the Manchurian languages. That's the thing. So that's a very interesting thing. They're absolutely different from the system. But the question is that because they are kind of like, the, like in one sense, the culture has been digesting their own culture. The, of course, they have another 
No, they didn't die. Just I correct myself. In terms of language, what they do, but the, but but the but the uh, uh, for example, wearing or like clothes, it's completely different. For example, like these days, most of the Chinese clothes that you think it is, in fact, it's it's come from the uh, uh, Qing Dynasty, the Manchu in house. I see. I mean, so, uh, th- th- this is th- that's why it's a very complicated thing. It uh, is a clear cultural interaction, but in terms of language wise, it's one way, it's one way street. Yes, yeah, it's, it's quite interesting. I didn't know any of that. There you go, I learn something new every every day on that. It's just a uh, because to me, I I don't really know too much about you know the language and too much about the culture and, and whatnot. I've got a very you know basic understanding regarding history relative to there's there's a lot that I obviously I, I I'm not aware of. I didn't know. Was this something recent in history that they kind of faced almost... Well, 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 well uh, just an example. For example, the clothing like Chong Sam, you will probably mm. notice that. They are one of the example of it. They are basically the Qing Dynasty stuff, but they've been in, superimposed on the Han, Han, uh, Han race, and right. obviously as well as the hairstyle. Right. Wow. So, so that is the thing. Um, that's why I believe I should highlight it because uh-huh. it's not everything is one way street. But in terms of language, unfortunately, uh, on on the Manchurian uh, uh, language, it's one way street that they yeah. basically suck in. There is something that, and that kind of reminds me of something in correlation. It's not exactly that same time period. It's, it's something that's actually happening recently. I can't remember the specific name, but I've seen it posted before. Apparently, right now there's a kind of a part. And a people that's been facing genocide because of the Chinese Communist Party. I don't. I don't know. I, 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 again, I don't know specifically. <laughs> I do apologise if I'm getting something wrong or that. But um, if you've got knowledge of it, Mike, at some point, I don't. It doesn't necessarily need to be tonight, but you could speak about that at some point. Um, sure. But yeah, I mean, uh, what I'll do? Just I'll just the, look at the uh, the other thing. Uh, it was something to do with the latest saga of the party gate in Hong Kong. So, what what was that you were speaking about with regards to the the party gate? Um, just well, just one point briefly because you talk about the uh, racial issue. I will just uh, quickly go through that. Um, uh, because I want to highlight that there is uh, believe that Han Chinese is supremacy. I would say that I wouldn't say this is a supreme. But it has been mostly dominated because, for example, there are quite a few royal houses. For example, like the Tang Dynasty, actually, is not a royal house. I mean, it's not ruled by the Han Chinese. If you okay. if you really want to calculate that, if you really try to trace the bloodline, it should be uh, Kurds. Mm-hmm. Turks or Kurds? I need to double check that. It should be. Uh, let me double check. It should be Kurds. But I need to double check that. Uh, uh, I believe it's Kurds, but I will I will double check it back later because 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 it's very similar. They are they're quite obvious because of their uh, customs and and etiquette. It's, it's quite different from the uh, original definition, so it's quite 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 clear about it. But of course, the Uyghurs, the uh, there's no question about that they have been suppressed it and subject to uh, the systematic suppression mm. or even fit in modern sense of genocide. Right. So uh, this is. It is absolutely sham- shambolic. I mean, and no one cares. And then they yeah. appears to be, on the, be the head of the UN uh, uh, Human Rights Council. I mean, this is the biggest joke I've ever read. But anyway, back to the point. Um, that was about the party gate. Now, a while ago, basically, there's a party gate in Hong Kong. You know, if we have a party gate over in the UK, uh, what happened was that... Um, there are a bunch of officials going to a party over in Hong Kong, and they suggested that um, they are attending a birthday party of one of these uh, junior, not, not junior officers, like liaison officers. Um, this actually is very interesting because this image leaked out. I mean, these are the images. You, usually, you do not leak these images yourself. I mean, what happened is I suspect that someone probably saved these images, and it is also trigger a huge problem because in other type of a, a internal party struggle within the whole CCP. I mean, why you leak these images out? Coincidentally, there will be a, a, a chief executive election in this year, a few months later. So I believe in that there is a very clear fight within different factions of the CCP over here. It's another proof that how 
politics can be struggled and and mm-hmm. how things could be working in, in within uh, the actually uh, SAR are actually really highly related to CCP because we have now reached a very bizarre point. You know, Hong Kong have followed the uh, zero COVID strategy or CCC, right? And what happened was that if you some of them party participants, some of them in fact were infected. Okay, so all these officials were we forced that to quarantine, go to quarantine camp. Okay, so the fun thing is that one of a few of them being quarantined for a day, and then they have to, of course, like uh, uh, being uh, relieved from their duties. You know, as understandable. And then suddenly, someone come out that oh, it was a false uh, positive, so they can go. But and then someone have to be, and then move in, and then move them back in. Because some of them have been figuring that some of them are, are not that line before and after. So because you have the people who arrive and calculate them. So I would argue that this is another case of power struggle. It is a way to remind those people who are in some of, one of the factions of CCP that they fought in power. But they now find the perfect excuse in order to stop all these things happening. Right. And because you have given the quarantine power so big, right? I've yeah. always argued with this kind of rules. I want to make myself very clear about it. This is nonsense. And this is a very good reminder, also remind us how we give government so much power. We could yeah. end up backfire so spectacularly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, I've, you know, it's, it, it doesn't matter where you come from. It's like, governments tend to just love an excuse for what I find. They love an excuse to find some way to gain more powers and that was kind of the the concern that I had regardless of what what people you know say whether the lockdowns were successful or not and you know I've seen stuff even posted by Tom Woods that contradicts it as such again that's a whole other argument whether people want to go into that or not However, it's the very fact that governments love such an excuse to use that as a means to then basically, you know, basically take away people's liberty. And you always find this. And it, and, and, it, and what really gave it away for me, what really gave everything away for me was the obvious. Because I was doing... Um, and I, I, obviously I was told about it before and it was something called the Global Reset yeah, and the Great Reset yeah the Great Reset that's it thanks for correcting me on that nope. and and I, I heard about it before and I was doing that particular video and I was doing the response video and, and I was looking you know because my channel is about you know defending capitalism and stuff like that so I decided to look up, you know, because I knew there would be content out there, something in relation to do with the pandemic, but at the same time, the capitalist rhetoric, because I, I knew my, a mile away, because I know from experience that every single one of these regimes, there's always some sort of thing behind it with an agenda of anti-capitalism. You saw that with the climate change, you saw that with so many things, even even the Black Lives Matter, they just used it as an excuse to say, oh well, you know, they, they, although they claim it's about, you know, slavery and racism, but there they are attacking and, and, and looting and burning, you know, private companies. <laughs> what, 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 what's that got to do with anything? And, and that's that's the thing. So, it was like just that. To, sorry, just to interrupt one part about the BRM. Oh, it's okay, it's I okay. always talk about BRM. BRM is always for blacks and black companies. Now, it's going to be very controversial, but I will raise two points. One, where is the BRM and the British Jewish and the British Chinese community subject to racial abuse? That's a very good point. Very two, good point. in the United States, why the BRM never condemned the 1992 LA riots that black realtors specially targeting stores owned by Korean and yep. other Oriental Asians? Yep. I mean, it's very clear. I mean, surely if they are, are anti-racism, including yeah. blacks, was others, right? And yeah. towards all the other minorities as well. It's quite clear the BRM what position they are taking. Yeah. So I can I can I I can knew immediately that when it came to the the all, all the sort of stuff like that, that 
just from doing the research and, and it was a video that was by the World Economic Forum, I did the response on it anyway, people can check that video out. I think I actually made it the main video and I did it in two parts because it was quite, you know, long as such. And from the two part videos on the pandemic or something and Covid or whatever you want to say, uh, they'll probably ban my channel. <laughs> the, the problem is, I, to be honest, I would have to say five, but they would have your channel, okay? They're, they're I would love to say that, okay? Now that I've said the word. <laughs> That's why I thought to say CC Dude Fibers, okay? You know what I mean, okay? Yeah, so... <laughs> so that's the thing, because... As soon as i seen the World Economic Forum and the Great Reset agenda that we're speaking about, immediately it was just all this anti-capitalist rhetoric. So, you take for example, the virus knows no borders, and I'm, I'm like, right, okay, we know where this is going. It's it's this agenda of oh we we, we need to have you know a, a one government that 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 somehow <laughs> you know what I mean takes care and of them. No, they go down go down to their usual route of control freak. Let's <laughs> exactly, say this way. and that's exactly it because they always love such an excuse to try and take more and more people's freedom away, and you actually saw that from the Scottish National Party when they started passing those permanent measures, the permanent lockdown measures and everything, basically what it means, okay, we might not be in lockdown at the moment, but at, but at any given time, you know, they've, they've got the powers to, you know, lock Scotland down at any, you know, any time they feel like. You know. Which is ridiculous. I mean, they, yes. they can say whatever that it is. I mean, this they can open a very, very bad precedent. Correct. And, and and that's the thing, because I, th I think eventually it's going to backfire on them and they're going to lose a, a hell of a lot of voters. I, I, I do believe that. But yes, I, I, and that was kind of the the point. Um, you do, to a, to a varying extent, um, see that with governments. And it's just like that in Hong Kong, as you're, as you're saying, um, which is quite interesting. Uh, as you said, he's sorry, three days down the street. Yes, I mean, this is Westminster, in, in this country it's just like, you're stuck between Westminster and H Holyrood, that <laughs> no, to, no, <laughs> both of them are as no, bad no, as each other. Here, it might be an unfashionable opinion. Who can be the bigger but lefty? Let's talk, <laughs> let's talk about Westminster. I, I, now, because when we talk about Hollywood, I always want, I'm, not, I'm not against the evolution, I want to make myself very clear about that. But I believe that we was so called the uh, current issue of the uh, Glastonian um, uh, uh, the, uh, home rule model because it's named after uh, 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 Glaston, you know, the Glastonian uh, home rule model, or what we call the. It's not answering the West Lothian question, it's, it's also what the uh, English question. If you probably notice what I'm referring to, uh -huh. because you have a devolution of power, um, we have created a situation that the Scottish. Um, Northern Irish and the Welsh MPs can discuss the matter that is not being devoluted about England, like as, as education. But the English MP cannot discuss the same matter that's already devoluted. You understand where I come from? Mm. So they create two parallel MPs. I never believe it should be devolution in that way. I, I believe, I do not believe in these things. I believe the best way to devolution is we take back everything uh -huh. and then we say that, look, we're going to give every single council the yeah. right to set their business rate and council tax, and yep. they will allow them to keep their own money. Yeah, get correct. I, th I that think that will be a game changer yeah. in my perspective. Because yeah. let's face it, if to we are going to this, this, we can not only because we already have the existing structure here, right? We uh -huh. can simplify the structures and uh, yeah. because I know, for example, like uh, the, all the we say goodbye to all these guys, like London Mayor or like like Scottish Parliament, the whole, whole yeah. and stuff. Yeah. One, two, we can use the existing structure. Three, people are getting closer to. To, to what they can see impact now you can hold this people yeah, more into exactly because see we should be forward because the good point that you're making now the the good point that you're making with regards to that is when you decentralize there's competition you know exactly. you're not forced in one in one place whereas because of the centralization of power that central government not is not only grown in size exponentially it's it's basically it's 
it has so much but, influence and power over you know, the entire nation. To, 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 the problem is that they're trying to justify the existence by keep growing and growing and growing. The only way that they, know that they can understand why they're creating the problems for, 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 for themselves to grow. You understand where I come from? Yeah. There was, a, there was an interesting question there by J.D. McFarlane as he was going to say, do you guys feel that there's a not public aspect I'm leaving that intentionally broad between dear first minister and the PRC. Quite interesting that uh, JD and and the thing is, I think you're meaning about the first minister. Is it here in Scotland or is it something else? That if if you're meaning something relative to here, if that is the case. I have been seeing certain things in this country, I don't know if this is on topic or not, but um, I have been seeing certain things in this country that's quite worrying with regards to the state education system and um, let's just say it's it's something that in, in relation to do with what kids are being fed, that there's certain Chinese Communist Party propaganda apparently. I think Nigel Farage had once touched upon it. Um, I, d- I don't. Again, what do I know? Um, but I, th- I think from certain posts that I've seen on Facebook, you know, because th- obviously they have kids that go to school. Um, one of which had came home with, you know, the the usual stuff. You draw pictures and everything like that. You know that through the state education, it's going to paint a more positive image of, you know, that sort of stuff. But I don't know what you have to say on with regards to that question. Well, I mean, they do try to uh, hold for some investment in, but um, a lot of uh, claims have just been made, shall we say, but they never materialise. I'm not surprised. Because the one by one rip policy is the best example, if I may dare to say, for corrupted uh, PRC officials to make sure that money will go out. I mean, a lot of people actually notice that. I mean, if you're comparing with the investment that, that like, PRC have so committed over in, let's say, Venezuela, for the sake of argument, and you take a look what happened in Venezuela, Venezuela, how do you pronounce that? The South what? Amer- American... Oh, Ven- Venezuela. Venezuela. Uh, I'm sorry, Ven- Venezuela. Venezuela. Excuse me, yes, see? I'm butchering names now. <laughs> Venezuela. Now, Venezuela, they have been supposed to be benefiting from the one bell, one uh, rule, run bell policy, right? They have invested of a huge amount of investment from the PRC who promised to build high speed rail within the country. But if you take a look what has supposed to be invested and coming to what actually has built, you can see a huge difference over there. My theory is that some of the officials, even the PRC, they use this as a way for corruption. They, because they, you know, the PRC have a very tight uh, foreign exchange control, right? Mm. So if you want to smuggle any money out, the best way to do it is to free infrastructure project because it's official projects. Well, rest of the money you put in the pocket, a little bit of them put it into the country, deal done. Mm. That is, I believe, that's what they do. See, the, there is another th- thing in relation to do with the question, JD, and it's, it is the fact that it does correlate with, and I th- I'm pretty, I, I'm not sure if he's, I'm not sure if Mike, if you had listed it down, it was something to do with the, the Chinese Communist Party spies. Oh, yes, you want me to get into this now? This because is they, time, you know? that will have a big... A very big that, part. That, 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 you want me to get into that now? That's that's a very good juicy part. Christine Chick Lee and its implication. Now, not very long ago, Christine Lee, you know, for the sake of simplification of pronunciation, because I'm sure that you will not butcher these names, Christine Lee, uh, you know, she was being accused by the MI5 as a spy. Now, no arrest was made, and, you know, um, the the, the man who raised this is use, um, uh, information release out, Ian Duncan Smith, was using the parliamentary privileges, so you cannot say anything about that. I mean, because it was um, it was uh, not circulated by the speaker to suggest that, and it was raised by Ian Duncan Smith. And what happened is that this is a very interesting woman. 
she is a certified lawyer, solicitor, if I'm correct. I, if I, last time I read her profile. Now, she has a lot of immigration contracts, whatever that contracts uh, look like illegitimate, look, quote, end quote. Okay, you understand where I come from. And, um, and most importantly, she actually is related to an a organization that is, the, that is uh, called, uh, oh, I certainly forget the name. It is, uh, it's a, it is it's a British Chinese uh, group of British Chinese Forum. I forget what is exactly the name it is. But, um, well, you may say that, well, it seems like it's very innocent, isn't it? You know, it is a British Chinese, you know, you could do whatever that it is. I mean, you know, it's look like it's, a, it's, a, it's just an ordinary example, isn't it? No, I can tell you that's not the case. Because this is the classic example that um, they do not... Um, how do you say? They they have a new set. Uh, they they use a different name in Chinese and English. This is very important. I'm trying to get the uh, website back, but I, mm-hmm. I it seems that it is not here. Uh, I am trying to find that. Uh, Christian Lee solicitors. Let me try to find that website back first. Yeah, because in relation to do with the the. You know the Chinese oh, Communist they, they, Party. Yes, spies, British right? Chinese BC project, the British Chinese project. Now the BC project, uh, uh, and, and and they no longer front her as the uh, 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 as, uh, as as a, as a person. They front her as, as as a man now. I don't know who that man is. I must stress that. But uh, anyway, um, what happened is that it's a British Chinese project. Now you may say, look, BC project sounds very innocent, right? And they say the integration of British Chinese into politics. Now that's a key important thing. This is about integration of British, um, British Chinese project. Now, first of all, I must stress that um, there's nothing wrong about people of, of what type of heritage background they are in. For example, like as far as they're, they're in my perspective, if, if for uh, for example, like for us, as far as they're libertarian stand, you know what I mean. I'm, I'm just like you have Jewish background, you have Indian background. That's not a big deal, okay? Mm-hmm. The question is then what this candidate are, are propagating. I mean, because these candidates are now. First of all, if you related to them, that could be already suspicious. And the next thing that not many people actually noticed that is that this organization are propagating different candidates from the Conservative Party, from the Labour Party, and so as the Lib Dems. This is very important. You are giving them a platform to channel these candidates within three major mainstream party. And this doesn't stop there. Because well, because it's very important to remind us that there are so called the CSSA Chinese Students or Student Scholars Association or Scholar Student Association. I forgot which one first. Um, what happened is that these organisations is basically led by the uh, uh, embassy or consulate general of the China within the local area, and they are all co- co- coordinated. Once again, I'm not suggesting that all these participants within this CSSA are necessary to be a communist sympathizer or a CCP um, agent. But it certainly gives them a platform, if you understand what I mean, mm-hmm. to establish the case here. That is exactly the, the, the situation what we're having here. And not to mention about that, for example, like a friend of mine actually go to the uh, uh, conservative Chinese uh, friends of Chinese Facebook group, even challenged them one time. They said that to ask, uh, ask, ask, ask these uh, people to say, look, you guys are supposed to be having, I uh, maintain a good relationship with so-called uh, trying to facilitate a good relationship between the UK and the PRC, right? But now the PRC has gained the BNO visa scheme. So what is your position? Hmm. These people are even not brave enough to respond, my friends. Comment. <laughs> you, you see why I'm asking? Because yeah. these people are basically, they are, in, I would not say all of them are. Some of them probably genuinely thought that this is a genuine organization, which I do not rule that out. But many of them, or those people leading them, is potentially problematic. Mm-hmm. Now, well, I'm not suggesting everyone should be uh, labeled right away. The last thing we want to do is to have a through book McCarthyism back in the 1940s, because we all know that Senator McCarthy led one of the most, I would argue, disastrous campaigns in terms of against communism. Because right. they, he accused anyone who take a potential it is, it became a crying wolf. Right, I and, see what you mean. And no one listened to it. Then after, because he, he he disgraced the whole course. You understand where I come from. Okay. But we certainly, if we, if I'm a, I'm, I'm the head of MI5 or GC, CCHQ, sorry GCHQ, excuse me, I would definitely, based on this leads, to check individuals carefully. 
because it certainly some of them smells fishy. Yeah, you, you wouldn't we trust. Be, yes, and we have to check it very, very carefully about that. And that's what we have to do what we have to do. Otherwise, we could be easily got 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 got, got in deep trouble, you know. Because, for example, like back to the point of Boris Johnson. I mean, do you know that? You know, actually, David Cameron and was actually uh, one of the uh, uh, and, and Boris Johnson was one of the early uh, sponsored of the uh, Ch- uh, Conservative Friends of Chinese. Hmm. I mean, they have, they will actually make their position very very fishy. Yeah, th- that's the thing with Boris. I mean, he's. It's like I say, he flip flops. He's not. I don't think he's someone consistent. I don't fully trust him. And you see it yourself with regards to. You can, you can see. So many things you've already mentioned re- relative to taxation and everything like that. He's, he's contradicting himself. He's not someone trustworthy, and especially if he's been, what's what was the name you called them that he was, up is was a part of or something? I would not say they are or sympathizer. I would sympathizer? not say they're sympathizer or agent, but okay. they could be in one sense. Um, I would say corrupted, but um, they thought that they've been looing and to get some benefits is not a big deal. Is that a corruption? Right. I will let you to make a decision about it because they will. Some of them are thought that genius. This is a good thing, but it's not. Mm. I mean, what these people are. I mean, you're dealing with people. You are dealing with. Do you trying to base a hope a crocodile will never eat meat? Hmm. This is ridiculous. Hmm. Well, I don't. I don't specifically know in terms of Boris Johnson, you know, but. Um, as you know, I'm not exactly someone who fully trusts uh, the government as such, um, especially with things. And I think pe- the, the the people of this country are very, very different to that of the political class. I think there there, there is the world of, of difference apart. There was even a story in relative. I think it was something in relation to do with the Chinese Communist Party spies. And then there was um, something correlative, again it would go back to the education, I think they were what buying up specific schools or something like that, and, they use, do. and, and using it for um, their agenda. Just one point to interrupt, I'm not against uh, foreigners to buy schools, but we need to be very careful. Um, now, of course you have to have freedom of teaching education, yeah. but the question is that this curriculum should be transparent. We need to know what they're teaching. Yeah, that's a very good point. That's it, in fact, and and I wouldn't have actually thought of that. Um, because it's because very f- easy for uh, yeah. just uh, uh, interrupt, interrupt. But it's very that's easy okay. to fed in information that get against um country. At, I mean, against individual, against liberty. Now, uh-huh. of course, they have the right to express these views. But the question, if you're trying to uh, as a a uh, uh, propagate a uh, 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 militant. Uh, 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 overthrown or, or or penetration, or uh, on, on uh, even a, 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 how do you call them? In terms of counter and psychological mindset, that could be a waging a war, because um this right. that will lead to the a point that I want to raise. For example, the Swiss famously said, that if you are under a cultural attack, then you are uh, considered as a, a, a attack. And um, what happened is that which a very good point that I forgot to almost mention is about the unconventional warfare. That the PRC is now currently deploying. Now, I highly uh, uh, encourage people to read a book called the uh, uh, I believe it's Unlimited War and um, Warfare. Let me double check, double check if I have the translation whether it is right or not. Because um, Unlimited War, I believe is. Let me. Let, uh, you you mm. might say a few words first. Oh, you, let you're... me double check the English English translation yeah. is right. I don't want to be having a dead air. I mean, just to quickly note, I mean, it was just all I was going to, you know, quickly state was about the the education. I think it's a very good point because I, I, I was kind of in conflict there, you know, because I, I support free market education. But I think it's always mindful 
to have a, 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 not critical but an, an independent mind to to question certain things and it, it was that slight concern that with you know apparently they were buying up you know these private schools or something like that but I think you have provided a quite a reasonable you know response a reasonable argument that they they should make the the content the you know stuff that they they teach the curriculum as uh, something transparent uh, I think that's a reasonable position I think that answers pretty much my own question over that yes because uh, this is what um, that's why I'm a huge follower and believer of Ronald Coase once we, we have, what we have to do is to define the property rights property rights define protect and do in the extremely broad terms reduce the transaction costs yeah. you know that's why Coase famously argued that for example like in his federal uh, uh, communication um uh, article he basically say that look the radio frequency has been completely interfered and, and jammed because of different users using right so what we have to do is to have a central government will define the frequencies and auction it off mm -hmm. that's what we call this this will also uh, avoid divergence i mean because it's divergence exists uh, when there's undefined property property right and that's very important now uh, just to have a very, very brief term okay for those who study economics they would talk about a uh, cold theorem a very good reminder that Coase's theorem is not invented by Coase, it's, it's invented by Joyce Strainer. And, and Ronald Coase actually is quite against Coase's theorem itself, okay? He said this is a wrong interpretation of his thesis uh, about the nature of the firm. But if we have a chance, let, next time, if, uh, we can talk about economics a lot. Then we can talk about the whole nature of the firm of D5 or an hour or two to only talk about yes. this. But back to the point. I managed to find the book name now, and um, it's called Unrestricted Warfare. Okay. This book, Unrestricted Warfare. This book is talk about um, not a physical war, but it's about a mindset, a cultural war. For example, like they will use some uh, aggressive, regular uh, warfare tactics, for example, economic war or terrorism, in order to achieve these results, using tactical tactics to achieve a strategic result. For example, like Christine Lee is a very good example of using cultural warfare and network warfare in order to penetrate through these things. You understand where I come from? Mm. And I highly recommend people to read this Unrestricted Warfare because it's a brilliant book that was... That, that, that. I will tell you that why it is a great thing. The, this Unrestricted Warfare is just only the title, a short title. Okay. The long title of the book is Unrestricted Warfare. Two Air Force Senior Colonels on Scenarios for War and the Operational Art in an Era of Globalization. This book was written by two... Um, PRC Air Force Colonel hmm. and to explain what exactly did happen because this book was written in 1999 and they talk about how things could be happening and I really believe in that anyone who really want to have an understanding of what both the PRC mindset could be this will be, I wouldn't say a bible but will be a very good guide to read it. To I give you an insight into what they are, they are thinking, basically? Yes, I would say it is, because they mm. are using they, they are using the strategies. You can see that they use different types of strategies come from this book. It's just, it just like very good read. For example, like, you know, it is a very uncommon thing for the MI5 who suddenly issue a circulation that someone is an agent, right? It's very, um, it, it's not orthodox to do so, you know? It's not, it's, it's, it's not something that you have usually. You know, it's not the intelligence will not come out. It's not British style, shall, shall we say it this way, you know. Why do they want to come out like this? Because I believe, now, I believe we have both agree Boris Johnson is not the person that we elected to be. I believe we can both agree, right? Hmm. But I believe we can also agree there is a systematic force trying to remove him out of office. I can't, I can't deny that. You know, I, I can't we, deny that. That's true. Yes, because it's very simple. All the parties things. I mean, this happened like a year ago. Why did we leak that a year ago? The timing hmm. is too convenient. That's why. Yeah, I, I think I... for me, what was very very suspicious was the whole thing just magically seemed to have appeared. Was it about a month or so? It was like straight after. Brexit? <laughs> Is it like straight of after course. Brexit? That's why I said that it's too convenient. That's why the timing is so strange. <laughs> I, that's why, I, 
do you know that's why I said there's a systematic force trying to remove him out of office. Is he not the person that we elected to be? Of course. Do I want to go? Of course. Does it mean that there is a there's, that it doesn't change the fact that there is a systematic force trying to get rid of him? Yeah, I, I do. I do. That's the thing I do worry about. It's like I'm not his biggest fan in, in certain things, especially of what he's done. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm not, and it kind of bewilders me that because I'm thinking to myself. Well, surely he wants to keep the Labour Party out, and because he's been, because he's been that bad, he's basically given credence to the the very party that lacks the most credence that that that, that, that seems impossible. In other words, Boris seems to be doing. I, I I can't say whether that's true or not because the polls are still saying that. Boris Just to is interrupt one point. The, yeah, yeah. There, so. there's a, I, because I track, I track all these posts. The biggest problem of Sir Keir is that he does right. not realize. He probably his team realized that the reason lead of Labour is not because he successfully get the Tories old voters to swing towards Labour. It's uh -huh. because the Tory voters are refusing to vote. They do not swing to Labour. That's why Labour is leading. That's why I said that if the Tories get a good leader that can con reconnect his voters, Labour is damned. Yeah. I believe Sir Kia noticed the problem. I believe Labour Party is not stupid enough to not notice the problem. But, uh, they might be, because Labour Party, I do not know whether you noticed that. Actually, a few weeks ago, there was a, a few articles suggesting that Labour Party is a rush of bankruptcy. And they might be soon run out of money that they, they simply lose the plot completely. But let's wait and see. Yeah. Uh, but the Labour Party is in a I believe should not be in the illusion to believe in that they are leading because they are swinging voters away. It could be still a very problematic time, and the Tories still recover. All they have to do is to find the right leader to reconnect those people. Yeah. Of course, they still have to get a leader to reconnect them. Otherwise, they would have already get rid of Boris Johnson. Um, for me personally, I believe. Uh, now, I'm just only saying. I'm not. I'm. I. I first disclosure. I'm not a member of any political party registered with, with the electoral uh, commission okay so i there's no way that i have to have, have ever saved to for ever name political parties anyway uh but um i could i would hope that steve baker can can run but i don't believe he will run yeah I mean, I've, 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 if, 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 if uh 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 steve baker do, does run i believe he is a good choice i did if, actually i i emailed um steve baker before the run up, uh, and he did respond to to my email and whatever, and obviously we were saying about following. I've I've probably still got the email there somewhere, um, but it just I just get the impression that he didn't want to, you know, which is a shame, because there is a select number. I wouldn't say they're the majority, <laughs> most certainly not. There is a select number in there who are more free market minded and I would trust Steve Baker. I mean, he's someone who has posted just recently something in relation to do with the current crisis. He acknowledges the problems with the interest rates. He can see that what's happening today is the same process, the same manipulation of the interest rates. The running of the printing press, all in the name of you know, all these silly bailouts, the quantitative easing that failed, the 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 the, the typical boom and bust cycle, you know, all all done through the the the, the central banking, and um, of course he he then quoted uh, Ludwig von Mises, and that's that's that for me is the reason why I would more than love to see somebody like. You know Steve Baker in in, in that respect. Um, you know. Well, to be honest, uh, you go ahead first. I, I thought you finished. You go ahead first. Yeah, it's uh, you know that's pretty much all I was really going to say on that particular issue. I mean, I do completely agree with you with regards to Steve Baker, but I just sadly I don't I don't think he. I don't know. It's like um, you see, here's the thing, right? Here's the thing that that a lot of people overlook, a lot of people don't 
you know, particular, they, they don't quite realise of what I'm saying. People don't acknowledge that there's a world of difference between a politician in position of power to that of what they want. You know, politicians can want to do something. They can have all the good intentions as well. Of course, I would say that more applies to that that of socialists because they intend and they often, you know, they create catastrophic Uh, consequences. Well, that's a class. That's why Friedman always argue. You know, you can you need to judge a policy by uh, by 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 the result, but not by the intention that is always what he absolutely said. absolutely and even thomas sowell as well two great economists um and you know it's, it's it's one of these things that you know these politicians can make promises and the reason why they do make promises is because let's face it let's let's be just brutally honest most folk in society Probably because of the education system, and no doubt because of the mainstream media, and I would say because of the perception of a given time period in history, they've been wrongly influenced of a narrative that capitalism is the fault, which is why they believe in all the, the, the rhetoric that capitalism caused the boom and bust cycle, but the point being is that most folk in society believe that you need to protect yourself from capitalism. In other words, they they believe, oh, we need to strike the right balance between capitalism and socialism. So, as a result, they end up falling for the trap of all the Keynesian nonsense. And they end up believing, just because they're popular, in other words, the Keynesian economists, just because they're popular, they end up buying into a lot of the rhetoric just to intro our points, many kings in the commons are not kings yet. I'm, uh, I'm sure that you will. We talked about in previous debates. Uh, <laughs> not debates. Not, we, we didn't debate with you, but we, uh, I debate with other people, and we previously have uh, other stream. We talk about it. Many kings are not kings. I can assure you that kings will probably roll in his race now to say that he has been labeled as such things. But anyway. You, you, you could argue that. I mean, that's, uh, that's a fair point. Um, but I think, you know, it's like let's just say mainstream economics, okay, because they're not, they're they're most certainly not of, you know. I would say that a mixed economy supporters, because what Chicago School one time was one of the mainstreams, and, well, if we have time, we talk about why Chicago School was so dominant, and they're now being declined, and anyway. Absolutely. They're the victim of their success, but anyway, you go ahead. Absolutely, I I think you're you're spot on. Um, the, The mixed economy sympathizers, um, you see, the problem is, is that because people have been conditioned so much, they think that you know is the answer, and they think that capitalism results in all the all the sky would cave in, all these monopolies would prop up, etc., etc., etc. You know, you understand all that, but that's the point because politicians are then left in a position where they've get absolutely no choice. If they want to win votes, if they want to get into power, they've got no choice but to lie to the people, in other words, to basically, you know, make all these promises, even if it's things that they don't support, you know, like, for example, um, the rhetoric, oh, we will, we will spend and we will protect the NHS, deep down, I think they would more than love to just, you know, completely abolish it, you know, I, th- I think they would, you know, more than love to do that. But they can't do it, and the reason why they can't do it is because, you know, average Joe public is, you know, they're so conditioned, they're so brainwashed, that if you even dared try to do such a thing, by Christ, you would see riots out there on the street, you know, calling for their head with all the pitchforks and all sorts. <laughs> That's... <laughs> the problem that we're having now, that usually I, because... I usually have a classic way to to ask this question. You know, for example, at NHS, I always ask why Western medicine are so privileged to receive government funding. Because I would point out the discrimination, because usually when the government pick winners, they will have a natural tendency of discrimination. 
it is extremely rare that the government pick winners will not create a, 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 a discrimination. This will box them into the corner. This is a classic way I usually pick uh, to, to, to argue with them. And then I will go down and nail with it. This is my approach. And that will be what, uh, what I prefer to do. And that, that, that is the thing. And, um, I, well, I mean, uh, uh, well, why would, but of course, overall, um, the issue that we are having here is that, of course, education is very important. The textbooks has been dominated by misinformation, which I agree. I mean, the pro obviously the whole economic things is not really performing very well. I mean, for example, I just just jump into having to talk about the Chicago School of Rising of Chicago School here because it's very sad. I mean, because now I I just tell you that the reason I call myself a new classical economics is not Chicago School. Of course, I have some I have my dispute with I have my things I dis disagree with Chicago School. For example, like Chicago Sky are absolutely dead set against their obsession of full employment. I don't know about many people actually notice that full employment is um, something that Chicago schools a, a economic theories are heavily based on. Mm. And I'm sure that um, we both agree that full employment is not achievable. Now, to give some context, full employment doesn't mean that everybody gets a job. Full employment means that no structural employment, no structural employment, no property, no one is sacked, everybody is quit their own job. So in other words, those people are intended to do nothing, those people who are at home. Right. It's never be achievable. Yeah. And I challenge anyone to find out evidence to suggest that full employment have ever been achieved in the society. Anyway, yeah. that's why I, this is why I, I do call myself Chicago School Economics. My micro is heavily in, in, influenced by people like Milton Friedman, um, yeah. Ronald Coase, George Strina. Of course, they're their weakness. But we, the, the fact is that Chicago School are heavily in, emphasized in imperial evidence. Because, well, I mean, I'm very lucky. My mentor in economics, um, actually, his PhD supervisor, Professor Stephen Ennis Jones, was one of the uh, final uh, associates of um, and, and students of Milton Friedman. And um, so he learned a lot. I mean, he was a region of PhD UCLA and then from uh, with Amanda Elching and then go to like go to a postdoctorate in, in University of Chicago. Mm -hmm. So he's quite quite well known. I mean, in, in this field scene. But the point is that you may say, look, why if these people are talking about imperial evidence, why they will fall down? You know, the problem is that they're they're they're, they're victim of their own success because in the 1970s, you remember there was an oil embargo, right, mm -hmm. by the uh, Middle East countries. Yeah. So the oil price go up. Okay, so what happened is that um, you oil price go up, your production costs go up, but your your demand doesn't drop, so the price will go up, right? You know, in America, there's something called antitrust law. Yeah. They they oh, and anti pricing control. Okay. The problem is that because all the oil companies rate have to raise the price naturally, so what happened is that they have been accused of uh, 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 collusion in pricing. Yeah. Yeah. But this is not the case, though. So that's they have to find some weakness to defend them. They have some professional weakness, you know. That's why they find the Chicago School Economics. Is. I mean, and they are a very good deal, by the way. Um, they are paying two hundred bucks per hour back then. Hmm. That's a lot of money in like, nineteen seventies. Okay. Yeah. That's not cheap. Okay. And um, and of course, do you say that how to count that? The hour was that um. Uh, now two hundred dollars is not the uh, it's not it's not the ordinary economics is, uh, one okay this is like uh, is a uh, George uh, George Strainer, one of the Nobel Economic Prize winner level okay of course is um, and what happened was that you counted on the day that when the secretary called you in like said let's say uh, um, Mr McAlvin when the the board need to meet you now okay <laughs> when the phone call dropped your hours start to count okay. Then, of course, you may say, look, they're going to walk to the headquarters so we can have the most time, right? No, they would say that your car is now ready downstairs. So you'll be chauffeur to an airport, not to a, a ordinary airline or like, like, like US Airways, Delta, no. You'll be chauffeur to a private jet, a private jet terminal. You will onboard a private jet, flow in to the headquarters of the oil company. You will usually take two to three days, okay? So can you imagine that? You're gonna pick up, you know, several thousands of dollars in 970s for two or three days work. That's very lucrative, isn't it? So these smart people, they will go out and they will do this work, okay, for a few years. And the reason that why they're so brilliant is because you have to present the evidence um, in front of the judge and jury, which and 
have never have, have a clue of economics, right? Mm -hmm. So you need to use a very layman terms to communicate to them. You cannot just simply say, you lot don't have a clue of economics, get rid. <laughs> get rid. You can't. You can't speak to them like that, right? You're, 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 you're Milton Friedman, you're George Strider. You cannot do that, okay? You cannot say, well, you lot get loose, you can't, okay? Okay, you can't. That's, that's so what now we do. <laughs> You understand where I come from, okay? I'm glad I may have made you laugh. I hope that I managed to make our audience laugh, okay? You can't. So you have to communicate with them in the most easy layman terms. That give us the Chicago School, not us, I'm not Chicago School, but the Chicago School of Microeconomics, a leading edge. How to get this thing through? How to find empirical evidence? How to find evidence in real world? Matching together. That's why we can communicate with people, and like all these people in the Google land who doesn't have a clue what to do. Um, that is the thing. Mm. Now, yeah, that's fair let's point. get you one point. St Professor Joe, one point tell my mental economics said one time, you know, you have uh, university meetings, you have a faculties meeting, right? And um, it happened that it crashed with the day that they have to go with the oil companies. So of course you go off with the oil companies because it's making more money, right? So Professor John said that he would just leave a sick leave about that. And um, you know what? When they all go to oil companies, half of the Chicago school staff are over there. Can you believe me? Hmm. Then the, you know, the next question they ask is what? Is that anyone go to the staff meeting? In the university? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but of course, but this is the problem. Because these people, after that, they have go to like two to three years later. Yeah. All, all embargoes leave up, right? So this type of work is no longer required. When they go back to the Chicago school, they're no longer able to see up the, take up the old positions because they've been away for a few years. Mm. So those people who cannot communicate, who cannot use real life facts, now holding the power. And now they start talking about all these things. For example, like the real business cycle. Okay, the basic, the whole theory have no thing. Nothing about money. I mean, this is gonna be kidding me. You know, money is 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 essentially about the old macroeconomics. From what I gather, and 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 from what I've I've acknowledged as well, there is, um, even from what you know, Bob Murphy had touched upon himself. There is the distinction between the Austrian school I had been reading and and that of, you know, take for example the Chicago school, and I think it was more or less a, a monetary, you know. Different the mon the monetary theory, um, being different, um, from what I yes, gathered. Yes, um, and the most important is sometimes our methodologies are different. For example, we do not talk about like utility or what kinds of things. We cannot measure them. We said that the best way to do is to base on the results of of, of the observation of the results. Mm -hmm. So that's why you see that for example, Thomas Sowell is heavily um rely on now. He's not against maths, just like me, just like uh -huh. Freeman. We're not against maths. We are against misuse of misrepresentation of statistics. Many people doesn't know that. Actually, Milton Friedman, he was a statistician before becoming, a, a, becoming an economist. I don't no, know not that. Said. Yes, mm -hmm. he's famous for his uh, uh, research on the... Uh, he's a very... Milton Friedman's a very... From what I've found of him, he's a very, very intelligent man. He, he, you know, whenever it came across the arguments, he certainly know how to he knew how to put people in their place that would have them, you know, sit there and he was able to do it in such a, you know, such a Brilliant calm manner. Man, yeah, he, he was a great communicator, he was he was fantastic for that. I didn't know he was, um, as you say, he was a a because before that he's a famously published a book about the consumer function. Basically okay. it's about that how, how people are spending their money, okay? That actually is a very, very key work. This is one one of the reasons that why he actually read the Nobel Prize. Because if, if anyone want to want to talk about that, you can read this so-called the permanent income hypothesis. That is basically uh, it is something that is about Milton Friedman and his his his, his, his uh, research on the uh, on how uh, people actually spend their own money. Yeah. Which many people actually doesn't notice that he was a statistician. So that's why he know all the issues that potentially lead to uh, classic statistics. So we are not against mathematics. But we have to understand how he presented. For example, Thomas Sowell, you know, a famously blitz uh, a feminist about how the income inequality, which in fact it isn't, then probably sure that you read this um, 
we watched this video before. And that's what we talk about. We're not against math, but we are against the obsession of math, and we are against to solely rely on math representing, and we are also against the misuse of statistics. Right, I see. Because, because there was, the there was the mention there, and I think Bob Murphy had touched upon it himself. Again, the distinction, there was something mentioned about the mainstream going down the road of more there's something of, of mathematics I, 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 if, if I could remember oh, right well, it was well, a while well, ago since I read the problem is that they go to game theory stuff I mean it's right. nonsense right. they're they mathematics okay now I'm not saying nonsense they're not economics but I always have a symbol uh -huh. mathematics is a two right okay but you sh we're now the problem is that we've been the two is overtaking the discipline it's right. ridiculous we can't we Overdoing if you want to study it? math, please do go to mathematics. Do not ruin the economy. Right, yeah. You're ruining the economics. Yeah. That's where I come from. Overdoing that's, it. Yep, that's why I say that it is nonsense. Me and, and Steve, Professor Joe, and also as is like Brian, like Friedman Friedman, and my mentor, and we, we have been screwed. We've been screwed away from the mainstream economy. Economics discussion. Yeah. yeah. In a sense, because we do have mathematics presentation. I mean, if you take a look at people like uh, uh, Alfred Marshall, he's a, a hell of a mathematics talk about that, but he never let about the mathematics to be overtaken by uh, uh, the whole, whole, whole situation. The whole thing that we are having here is that um, we, we have to understand the problem that mathematics is a tool, is an assistant, but could not be used as a way to solve everything. That's mm -hmm. the whole thing. And that's exactly the reason that why I'm against the so-called mainstream uh, economics at the moment. Because even Keynesian's economics are decent in that level. Because he never allowed mathematics to be taken over. It's very important. Because he uses it as a way to present yeah. the stuff. I mean, that's, but, that's the thing. Because, I mean, it's... It's like I say, when I say they overdo things, they use a lot of mathematics for a lot of, in other words, justification for trying to control things, for trying to over control things. And I, th I think from what I read, there was a closer similarity between the Austrian school and Milton Friedman and, and, with the Chicago school in the sense that, you know, they had that sort of hands-off approach. I wouldn't yeah. say hands-off approach, but we do not... Now I cannot speak to Audrey's school to be to be to be clarified, but the, yeah. the Chicago school micro uh, economics say we, we do not tend to um, over rely on mathematics. We have our idea of mathematics. We use mathematics. We okay. use statistics anal analysis, but we do not. I would say traditional Chicago school, like like like, like Milton Friedman style. Okay, uh -huh. but we do not go down to the root of of central mathematics. I mean, I mean, just to give us some idea, for example, like okay. uh, talk about go back to full employment. Some of the PhD thesis are about that generation overlapping of how to achieve through employment. I mean, I mean, and then use a bunch of mathematics. It's ridiculous. And then they, and and, and another PhD thesis could be talking about how to use free generation overlapping of using, and then use all the bunch of mathematics. No, this is going on a horribly wrong route. Just like the famously the couch is, uh, just like the famous famously what well, I always said. And then you have one, 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 one of the another PhD thesis. We'll talk about what they talk about how to use mathematics run all the supply and demand of all this kind of stuff. It's nonsense. Mm -hmm. Stop it. We're going down to the route to, the, which is uh, absolutely the wrong way because economics is fundamentally about observation. Yeah. If you do not get your observation right, you 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 are not going to. Um, Get it, get it, get any prediction right. If you have no prediction, you're finished. You're finished, because the whole uh, the reason of economics is about prediction and explanation. And if you if you fail about uh, uh, that either it's one true. of them, you, you're finished. Yeah, I mean it's it's one of these things. It's not a case of just hit and hope. No. Well, I I do not know what I can say, but. Uh, I mean, there's one time that very, very famously known the uh, uh, the Strauss fo formula, the Black Strauss formula. I mean, this is a very good example of mathematics how it invade econ economics. 
Black Strauss model basically is about um, how to price the options or derivatives. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. And what have basically derivative, but options one of the derivatives. But the question is that first of all, well, I'll talk about how to price is already not economics, strictly speaking, because you know, uh, 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 to be quite honest with you, um, we should explain what the price should be set, but not to tell the people how to set the price, right? Right. From economics perspective. But okay, but they, they they still get Nobel Prize, okay? But 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 you know the funny thing is, um, two these two guys get into a company called LTCM. Okay, long-term capital management company. And a few years later, the whole company go bankrupt. It's a hedge fund, okay? You mm -hmm. see, this is the best example to prove how the theory fail when they put into the uh, 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 in the real world. And mm, how yeah. important that we always have to test our thesis in the real world. Yeah, it it's makes sense. It's very important. Facts. I'm pretty theory. sure Adam Smith had touched upon something like that. And it was something, and a lot of socialists had picked it up wrongly. I think it was, it was something to do with his comment on policy and regulation. I think they they misinterpreted as in the, oh he supports you know all this government regulation when really he's just saying that if it's necessary, then of course if 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 tried and tested if it's if it's feasible, then sure. But if not, and I, I'm I'm also sure. If I remember right, who was it? Henry Hazlitt had mentioned something in his own book, Economics in One Lesson. He mentioned something down the lines of, um, you know, it, well, of course others would have mentioned as well, something along the lines of such things should be looked at in the, the short term and the long term. Um, and not just, you know, going head first into things. And <laughs> you get what I'm saying. Yes, of course. My, my point will be very simple, you know, because we are not a uh, NCAP, you know. So we That's fair enough. Fundamental, fundamentally believing that some sort of government should exist. Yeah, that's, that's fair enough. So um, that's why I say that in a very broad terms, that I believe that, um, just like one of the girls said, you know, the government exists probably about two things. Define and protect private property rights. And next is in a very broad term to reduce the transaction cost. For example, like that's why I talk about that we should be auctioning um, divided bandwidth or like like television or, or mobile mm. phones and the auction and offer radio. Is, you understand where I come from? Uh -huh. And also, for example, like the point that I raised about the transparency of curriculum. You mm. know, we're not talking about anything. So you're, all you have to do is a transparency cur curriculum of the schools. You know. Yeah. We should, I uh, which the government should also publish all the indicators, like um, oh, what is their latest exam results, all these kind of things. You know, we're reducing the transaction cost, we're reducing the information cost of people, so we know what is going on. I'm not against school inspection because we should need to know what is going on, but we just publish them. Well, if you decide to go to a bad school, that is your choice. You understand where I come from. Mm -hmm. So that's what we should be going to do as a government, rather than to go on the flu but we're going to provide all the government-owned schools. You understand what I mean? Yeah. I just got was obviously just at the same time as you know some of the comments that that was about the the nationalist socialists as, as, as you know bubblegum mentions national socialist is the only rational economic system besides the free market. You see the, the thing is though I mean you see the 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 problem is with you know the national socialism it was faced. That's Nazi. Yeah, it's, it, it was faced with problems much like any other form of socialism. It, it was faced with an inflationary problem. Um, you saw that between 1933 and 1936. And as a result of the inflationary problems, they then began the price controls and what, what have you. And again, I, I know I've, I've touched upon it so many times before, you know, the economic calculation problem and and stuff like that. I wouldn't go as far as to say, you know, out of respect, you know, it's it's not really rational as, as such. Um, but if you were to, com if, if you were to compare, you know, let's say fascism from an economics perspective, if you were to compare that to Marxism, 
you might have an argument in to, to on a question of scale, but I don't believe I don't believe there's anything rational to the argument relative to Nazism, and which is slight. I think it's slightly different but, from that. Or of fascism. Perhaps to say at this point. The more that the government is trying to intervene on the allocation of resources, the true. worse that it is. True, true, and that's that is the best way to summarize it in my perspective. Correct, and that that's that you know I think Mike's just summed it up better than I could in a, such a short period of time. It's, it's, well, it's, well, thank you very much. Well, that that that's what I would think about that um, because um, that that that's the thing. Um, well, I don't want to say that, but uh, I'm I face a lot of academic languages so I, when I say that I'll just give you a bunch of academic languages that will try to hopefully summarize the point mm. so um, that's the thing see I don't I, 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 you get these responses and I don't agree with that argument where some where someone sure, sure. might say because I, 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 I never use the term either you've probably heard it yourself Mike it's this, it's this term they use they say neoliberalism will Neoliberalism to me doesn't even make you know much sense anyway. But um, I don't buy into things in a black and white world because things are down to a question of scale, which is the very reason why free markets have existed. Like for example, Singapore is regarded as free market. Um, Hong Kong, for a you know relatively you know lengthy period of time, was free market. So was Sweden between 1870 to 1960, and you're talking about a 90 year t time period, you know, and of course they would transition away, but, you know, for, for, for long periods of time, they were free markets, and, and I, don't, I don't believe things are really that black and white to say, well, if, it, if, if it's not, you know, anarchism, then it's not free market, it, it just, it doesn't work like that, because the thing is, is the the word free is scalable, um. Th therefore, you've got the question of how free the economy is, and you know some economies are freer than other economies, and 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 therefore, or even to a policy wise, for example, like preach yeah. uh, shopping term and pro yeah. shopping term policy, yeah, and the open door policy could be at the same country, could be change a lot of things. Yes, I mean. This is a uh, yep. So that's just the point I want to want to raise. Even though it's not a complete free market, but it's a much more freer market, you know, in in that sense. Absolutely, and you you're spot on with that, Mike. Because the reality is, I mean, you take for example, you might compare Hong Kong and Singapore. That you know, certain policy decisions would have been different in Singapore to that of what it would have been like in Hong Kong and again the same way the other way around with Hong Kong to that of Singapore you know sure, sure. and and it's always been more complex because then you, you you narrow things down or even in which sector of these uh, policies for example transportation yes uh, that's in, it infrastructure and and and, and exact rest, you know because so, some so that's that's exactly it, what you're saying because some areas, some sectors of the economy will be freer than others. And that's that's the reason why whenever someone comes back and says, well, you know, government owner, go government owns the housing or government ownership of the land and, and you think to yourself, okay, well, that's not going to, you know, stop a, 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 an, an economy being free market. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's too much of a black and white argument. So everything... And I, I know that some people's arguments might be and they say, well, at the end of the day, you, you'll have government intervention, all the rest of this. I don't believe there is such a thing as this perfect world. But there is free markets. Um, yes, there are arguments about... And I know where that argument is going down the road of. It's, you know, it's one of those things... You know, someone would argue about yeah. upholding such a thing, but either way, I mean, it's it's just one of those things. Um. So yeah. Sure, understand that, and 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 understand what you mean, because at the end of the day, 
the different aspects, different sector of the industry and the economy can be having different things. So overall, we can agree that, well, I mean, define the protect property rights, reducing transaction costs, this is the government function, and we can conclude that, you know, the, the more government trying to interview the allocation of resources, the worse that it is. And that is the basic principle of it. And we have a lot of evidence to back it. And um, speaking about that, I'm sorry that I have to go back a little bit because I I just realized I forgot to say something about that. Um, That's slightly, no yeah, because I was talking about the unrestricted warfare. Mm-hmm. I was because what what happened was that um, I believe the reason why the intelligence service has revealed this information so abruptly is because um, someone trying to move Boris Johnson out, and they need to draw a defense line. They want to stop the attack from the PRC. In my perspective, someone from the PRC is trying to remove Boris Johnson out. So to create a instability about the, because it's part of unrestricted warfare. Let's face it. If there is an unstable UK government and the Western government, um, it's very easily, you know, the PRC could escape what their responsibilities on in terms of the virus that the potential lead to back to them. So that is the point. And um, so that's why the intelligence services, they release information to stop, to interrupt the attacking foe attacking flow as a way not to do so and i highly recommend people to read that book unrestricted warfare it's yeah. a very, very good book and it's it's very very worth it and there's english version of course otherwise i'm not going to say that <laughs> and um really good read which should be a very good one to understand what their principles are and now back to you yeah that's that's perfectly fine and everything you know so it's like i say i mean this is it's one of these things that it gives you an insight into you know their way of thinking and everything like that, and I think I think you've 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 addressed everything that's spot on, especially with the government's inter interference and and what have you. Like I said, that the world and economics certainly isn't like I've already pointed out anyway. I think I've already got that that point across that nothing in this world is black and white. Like I say, I mean some parts of the economy are freer than others. Some countries are freer than others, and you know, when you're talking about a free market, yes, we don't live in a, under a free market today, but, you know, there is a point where your market does become somewhat free. Uh, and you can see that actually the market that is freer is better. Yes. And so, in, in other words, like like you rightly point out there, as you, as you rightly state, Mike, um, you know... The, the freer the economy does become, it just happens to be that your economy does perform um, better off. And, that, and that, that was actually the very reason why, you know, you saw vast improvement in the likes of Sweden and Denmark. You know, when they carried out deregulation, you saw the economic growth. Likewise, you know, you've seen it throughout history. Hong Kong was living proof of that, and so was yep. Singapore, and and even Sweden before all of the heavy nationalisation. You know, Sweden back, you know, like I said before, between eighteen seventy to nineteen sixty, when it hit the free market era, um, and that's the thing because, you know, it 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 just so happens to be it, it, it's it's like um, it's like a disease. The, if you think about government's intervention, and, and and I know a lot of people have all you know good intentions, but how they intend for things to be ends up being the opposite. And it, it was just like that with regards to monopolies, oligopolies, cartels. The historical example I've pointed out numerous times before: the American Medical Association monopoly. You know that that literally was sure. you know. A government granted monopoly it literally was created by government just like the collusion and, and no one talk about that i mean for example like not until 1970s that um actually um, the ama required all the members must be a uh, uh, american citizen which is absurd yeah because, uh, until the 90, late 1970s they have no choice because people basically say that you are you're bsing around you how can you simply all the members must be american citizens because not many people notice that this law has been implemented in nineteen thirties. Because back then, you know, the, when the uh, Nazi Germany trying to uh, 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 targeting Jews, right? Like start phrasing out them from the jobs. So this Jewish population flee was one of the destinations of America. 
and they acquire a uh, quite certain amount of uh, uh, Jewish practitioners, medical practitioners from flee to America. And the AI may want to protect the market. What they do? Bring a law. Okay, they can only accept American citizens as an AMA member. Mm. No one talk about that. This is a this is an outrageous racist law. I mean, why it has to be? I mean, because it's basically targeting the Jewish community, really. Why it has to be? Mm-hmm. Simple. Yeah. That's why I said says that this kind of there's a ridiculous re- regulation. No one even talk about that. I mean, not to mention about that in in the early days that when they tried to propose uh, the the minimum wage. I mean, some of the um. Democratic uh, House of Representatives even on record suggest that the reason that why they supported the minimum wage is because they want to protect the black people to com- compete with the white people. I mean, because they want to basically make the wages artificially higher so that basically um, uh, th- uh, these black people will be, uh, 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 cannot be, because, because basically employers cannot be afforded to pay them as, as a result to basically force it for the white, white population. Of course, it's assuming that the uh, black people community will be able to improve themselves, which is a big uh, mm. uh, uh, assumption not necessarily be true, but, but you can see how these people are. Why they do not talk about all these people's people? If these people are truly care about this if people's intention, why they do not talk about that? You, s- you see the, the the hypocrisy of all these people are. Hmm. Oh, that's a fair, it's a fair point. You know, it's a fair point. What you brought up, I think, obviously, because we've covered quite a, you know, a fair bit, especially because I don't know what what was um. Just checking we over. Can, you want to take a look at the comments or our next talking point? Because obviously there's quite a fair bit else that I've seen. Um, we might finish up on this next point basically. Um, because this one, I suppose, might correlate in some sense. Maoist versus the Chinese Communist Party corporatist. The infight within the CCP. Uh, what was that? See, it fas- economic fascism. I economic typed it, fascism. I typed it, I typed it wrongly. Uh, uh, right. uh, yes, economic fascism. What happened is very interesting. You know, the uh, CCP fashion of the pharmacy uh, of you know. They basically accused that one of the, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, oh, how you call them? You know, Lenovo computer. You heard about that? Yeah, I, I know of the name, yeah. Yes, you know, one of the leading computer manufacturers in the world these days, after they acquired IBM and then later the mid of their, of their personal computer uh, department. Um, what happened was that um, that founder was later discovered that actually he is using his uh, connection back then. He was working under the uh, science and research departments of the CCP. And um, he took the advantages because he basically uh, to uh, use one of the connections to ask someone to proxily buy the shares of Lenovo in an extremely cheap price without any competition. Hmm. So and and basically the Maoist pointed out that he is abusing his position. But I mean after all, you two of them are basically economic fascists. In that sense. It is also a, 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 a information that to highlight that um the a continuous conflict between the uh uh two parties, I mean with the within the different factions of C C P and obviously not about the, the hypocrisy. I mean, let's face it. I mean, if the Maoists are economic fascist, it just benefits each other, the different people, really, isn't it? Yeah. And um, I know we have a few quick points. We will quickly wrap it up because um, I, 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 I want to uh, finish all the points because some of the points um, that uh, if I don't finish it, uh, we will be quite too long. Um, another one will be the um, Sino-Russian relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, I always want to take the opportunity to clarify that because it is the biggest myth that I once again must bust. I mean, this is wrong, 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 wrong to say that they are allies. They are not even friends. I mean, first of all, we talked about the bloody frost situation a few episodes ago. Yeah, I about remember the, the problem. I mean, I mean, yes, it's absolutely show that how bad their relationship is. But let's take a look at other ground facts, okay? First of all, back in 2015, Putin actually submitted a, a report to the uh, Duma, that is the Russian parliament, the lower house, actually pointed out in the next 20 years, the biggest enemy, or the rival of Russia, you know is who? The PRC. Hmm. Now, not not notice that. Next, Russia repealed the, uh, the most favorable country status of the PRC. Mm-hmm. Now, why don't you never see that the Western mainstream media pointed out that, okay? Free. 
Um, a while ago, a short while ago, you know, Russia signed a new agreement with India. I do not know whether you noticed that. But uh, that agreement, actually, first of all, you know, India have a border conflict between the PRC. I don't know whether you noticed that. So signing an agreement with India is not necessarily good news for PRC. Not to mention about that the content of the agreement is even getting worse. First of all, they sell a bunch of arms to India. And the most importantly, they allow India to access their uh, Russia uh, uh, ports or, or military bases if, if during the wartime. That means that if they are fighting a war, India can access Vladivostok, which is quite a disaster for the PRC. And obviously, not to mention about that uh, recently, you know, there is a dispute of the South China Sea Islands hmm. um, down, down in, in, in the area. And actually, you know, they have uh, the PRC have a dispute with Indonesia and, and, and other countries. And the fun thing is that the Russian state-owned oil companies, because there are oil over there, a, you know, that's why the, the, the dispute comes from, you know. You know, if these islands have no resources, no one will go to border to, to get them, you know. Let's face it. And um, what happened is that um, the Russian state-owned oil company is become a contractor of the Indonesian government to export, to export this oil. I mean, if they are pro PRC, surely they will not. They will avoid all these things, right? You see the problem. I always point out to the people that, not to mention about that, you know, um, a while ago, yes, there is a military joint military exercise between Russia yeah. and um, China. But the question is that after that, Putin explicitly threw out a military uh, alliance. Not to mention about how how chicken the PRC is. I mean, you know, they when they talk about that, they have a joint exercise in Vladivostok. The CCTV, right. you know, the state-owned company, the state-owned yeah. television propaganda of, of, mm. of the PRC, don't even brave enough to talk about Vladivostok. <laughs> this is a national shame. Yeah. Of course. Yes, that's why they never talk about that. And um, the only reason that why I would argue the joint exercise uh, exists is because that basically is about um, they're trying to deal with deal with um, Japan because Japan has been beef up their, their defense because of the PRC's issue which will go back to, we'll, we'll quickly move on to the point of Biden and the Democrats of the, on the PRC yeah because um, I think it, is that the yeah it's the next one isn't it yes well yes that's why because we, we, we are almost on on that time so that's why we'll quickly finish it um, because uh, what happened is that now we know that the Democrats has a lot of connection with the PRC for example like um, not many people know that um the current VP, the Vice President, Qi San Huang, actually he was very well connected with the Wall Street. Before he became the Vice President, twenty or more than twenty years ago, almost three decades ago, he was the uh, head of uh, one of the major f- uh, big four banks over in mainland China, the PRC. He was a banker, and back then, when the Canton Province, one of the uh, provisional owned state-owned company, the uh, 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 they have in financial trouble, he was being tasked to do so. And you know he act that he appointed Goldman Sachs to be his financial advisor, so he knew inside out all these kind of things, you know. So that's why first thing. Secondly, um, the Dems over in in they have a, a lot of connection. For example, how to use a uh, uh, Biden and how to use his family connection in trying to push up all this kind of money on etc. And it is the case because, for example, like um, a, a great example that um, one of the generals. Arjo Liu, well, this general is basically is an NDC, okay, and he's against the invasion of Taiwan, okay. He is actually famously writing an article, to write the title in 2004 on how bad that could be, and how why it is strategic mistake to invade Taiwan from the PRC perspective. Yeah. And then actually, his brother was actually working with the Jimmy Carter Foundation. I mean, you cannot get it more clear, right? Mm-hmm. So that's why I said that it's quite clear that there are a lot of connections between them. Yeah. Yes, and which is the reason why I bring it to the point. And um, obviously, um, I before one more thing, I want I, I re- recall that was uh, someone of the audience asked about the Big Mac index because in our last stream in the comment section that I will quickly address. Uh, I think I, I think I remember that. Yes, yeah, so the Big Mac index because what happened is that um, we we should not use the bigger index to view that as the as a price or these kind of things. Yes, I know that. The Big Mac index, because we understand the Big Mac index is about the purchasing power of the currency, but not the, we should not use it as a reverse way of pricing. And the most importantly, the Big Mac index, even though it's as, as a, only as a measure of purchasing of currency, purchasing power of the currency, 
the limitation is that we do not know the locals appetite of the Big Mac as well as other limitations as well. So I'm not the biggest fan of Big Mac Index. Because there's also a reason that why you're back to the part previously of we talk about economics and mathematics and, and all these kind of things. I'm we have a natural skeptics because Neil Friedman has given us the idea of statistics of skeptics of statistics, for example like I always ask the question, Finland has been always played as the happiest country in the world, right? Finland. Hmm. Why they have one of the highest suicide rates in the world? Couldn't tell you. You cannot have both both of them right. You know, you're supposed to be happiest country. You cannot have the, one of the highest suicide rates in the world. It's contradicting each other, right? Yeah, that is. It. You see, you see that in the like I say with the Scandinavian countries, you do. It's a it's a contradiction that. Well, they claim they're the happiest countries in the world, but um, they have high suicide rates. Yes, because uh, you're necessarily the lowest, but at least lower than average, right? I mean, yeah. let's face it, this is this is the point. You see, that this is why I said that the happiness index is having a lot of problems. I mean, suicide yeah, it's, rates, it's you, it's you cannot farcical. dispute that. Oh, okay, you know. That's why I said that, back to the statistic point, and that's the point that we have to evaluate our numbers very carefully when we talk about that. And yeah. these are the main, mainly things that we can, um, if you want to um, go back, oh, yes, before that, the Facebook, I re- remember that we have a question we need to answer. What is different between the uh, culture of the Han and the Hui? This is a ridiculously big question. Yeah. It, <laughs> the Hui is mostly Muslim in the extremely broad terms, but they are more than Muslim. They're not very, uh, is it secular how you say that? Like, like very religious is how you say secular. Secular is secular. Secular. Secular is that a word for religious or non or non religious? I th- I think the words of of I'm useless. There are certain words I'm not really great with. I don't preca- I, I secular, do not pretend. Secular, yes. Oh, okay, I checked the dictionary. Secular is means that yeah. it is a uh, is a more like a uh, 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 empty religious, not connected religious. Yes, it's more secular. Okay, not secular. Right. Secular. Okay. Secular, because they are, for example, like, um, uh, they are more modern in the sense, for example, like they have no problem about women or, or liberating about these things. Okay. More like uh, Indonesia, even in one sense, more, more modern than Indonesian in terms of religions wise. Obviously, they still keep their uh, practice that their diet happens. For example, like, like uh, they still run for the um, uh, oh, halal meat, you know, it's halal, the, the, the Muslim diet. The, the way to slaughter their, their meat. Yeah, but they still run that, uh, yes? Yeah. the words. Halal. Halal, thank you very much. I do apologize to my Muslim friend who's watching it because I, I did send him the link. <laughs> <laughs> I should have asked on South his pronunciation at first. But um, that is the thing. So it is a quite complicated question to answer on overall what exactly it is. So that's why I said that. I hope I give a brief answer, but I can say that the, the, even as Muslims in the with our sea time back then. It is a very uh, 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 modern or, or or more secular form. That is the way. Ah, so I, I, I seen Bubblegum had mentioned something about secular code word for neoliberal atheist cringe. Right. I've, I've heard, I have heard that word before and I've even seen you know, because there is someone called on YouTube Secular Talk. Okay. Uh, I, I've never actually bothered to look up the word because I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not religious, you know. <laughs> I've just, I've never been, um, I, I don't know the first thing about these things. So, is secular something in relation to do with athe- atheism then? Well, it's basically it's connect it's next connects to religious. So it really depends. If you're a very religious man, then of course um you will go against that. You know, if you're atheist, then of course and they will, will, if you're a very religious man, you're gonna say that secular is not necessarily to be a good thing. It really depends on which position you are taking. Right, right. See, I. I I don't even know what category I fall in. I, I'm I'm like someone who believes in God but just doesn't believe in religion. So <laughs> it's okay. I mean, you know, this is a, this is a freedom of, of, of religion. This is also one of the time of freedom freedom of beliefs. That's not a big deal at all, isn't it? I mean, that's see, so, yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things. Um... But we'll quick 
quickly some of our things. So yeah, what else was was to cover was um, was questions to audience on what extent we want to discuss. Yes. On Chinese culture. Well, we 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 can ask it again. Basically, yeah. we we last the last stream we talk about that, that we will revisit back to the issue about that, that what type of aspect of trans culture. But you know, trans culture is way too big. I mean, honestly. Oh, yeah. Um, we can talk about sem a few semester in university. What exactly you want to know? What you want me to dive into? Even philosophically, for example, we have nine school of force. Do you want us to read, or what? What, what exactly you want to do? Do let us know in the comment section, so we're going to have an answer on it because it's way too big and deep. Yeah, I think I think we can we can go straight to the because from that, I mean, it just you can go straight like to the the questions and answers. Or, like, if there's any questions you guys have, like. Um, in particular, you know, sure, that sure. makes you an agnostic theist, right? I see, an agnostic and theist. Agnostic is means that you do not know whether there is a god see, that exists or not. Yeah, see, I was, I was baptized. I had to actually look it up because I didn't understand it. I was baptized in an Anglican. Episcopalian Church. Episcopalian, from what I gather, has all the same structure as the Catholic Church. Is the, the the structure of the bishops and everything. Everything's the same. But apparently the Episcopalian Church rejects the Vatican. And I think that's really it. I, I believe it is the the Episcopalian, I believe it's, this is the Church of England's uh, name in, yes. in Scotland. Anglican. Because Yes, because I'm told that I was I was educated in the Church of England school from kindergarten to sixth form. <laughs> I never baptized though. So I mean, it, uh, just, to, just to tell you one thing, you 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 seem to believe I'm very talkative, right? I mm. might look like a very talkative person, but tell you a fun fact. Um, before three year old, I can only speak in I only speak two words: mum, dad, in Cantonese. That's it. When mm. I go to interviews, all the kindergartens are reject. Um, what happened was that it's kind of like you can say it's a fate. Um, one of my protege of my father, she noticed that she know the uh, church minister of the uh, Church of England school, because back then you know I can only speak two limited words. They thought I'm an abnormal child, hmm. so um, they put me to, they put my case to that minister and they said, "Oh, that's fine, not a problem. We can take him." That's me. The fun thing is that after they take me, I become extremely talkative to talk about a hell lot of things. You see. This is uh, going to be a fun thing. That's why you, you could argue this could be the fate have decided, destinated me to be there. But anyway, just a fun thing I want to share. Yeah, yeah. So like I say, guys, I mean, if you have got any questions, then that's enough. As you say, quick sticks, I'm agnostic, atheist, because I lean towards God not existing. Not God not existing, you lean more to him existing, but don't prescribe to a specific religion yeah I mean I, th I think that's I think that's fitting really to be honest with you because I, I, I don't know I just I've got nothing against people being religious or that but I've just never believed oh well one has to be in a church or one has to be you know following some specific given rules or something to to be in a specific given place in order to believe. Does that make sense? It's sure, does, Sam. Well, I believe in there are some principles that govern the whole universe, and that is the God. Yeah, I suppose. And, and that, 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 that is the way that I will I will see this this way. Um, you are, I do agree that you do not necessarily be congregate. I mean, you congregate, those people who attend the congregations, I mean, they're good people, if I may dare to say. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, I, I believe that. You know, I do believe that. Um, don't get me wrong. You know, I I do still believe in all the. Do you call it ceremonial? All the stuff like you know, the 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 the. I don't know if you call it part of the culture or the heritage, whatever you want to call it, but something in relation with, you know, structure such as marriages and all the rest of that I, I, do, I do still believe in all of that type of stuff 
but as a libertarian, you obviously know I don't believe in government intervention in that regard. But you know, it's one of those things with regards to religion. It's just uh, I've never really, you know, that's that's the reason why I, I've heard of the word secular. I just didn't know what that really was as such. Um, <laughs> Sure, sure, that's okay. I mean, I'm trying to get a more accurate word sometimes, but I, I, I sometimes confuse. The, yeah. the, 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 of course, that's why. I, I'm trying my best. I mean, uh, I don't I, I try my best. I mean, I know the English is not my native language. I'm trying my best to try to get the best message across the point. And uh, I, I hope um, it, it, can, it is helpful, in, shall we say, this way. No, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Christ, there's, uh, there's times I have to look up the dictionary and stuff like that to, to even gather but there's like all these mad words that are things that I just haven't heard of before and you know it's just one of those things. Sure, sure, no question about that. So yes, yeah, it's been a very, very good talk folk all in all and uh, I don't I don't think there's as, as any is there any questions as or just cycle through the last bit? Yeah, so it's been a very good talk folk, like I say. Um obviously, no doubt we'll have further updates at some point. Um and I will look to get out more content, no doubt about it. Um you know. So it has been sure. very interesting and I uh, hope you've en- enjoyed the, the feed as such. And uh, thank you guys for obviously watching and um, yeah, I mean at the end of the day I will look to, well I'll, I'll look at my list or whatever on and see about getting something out at least. Um, sure, and we still have the uh, recordings, I recorded. Yeah, indeed. Yes. Indeed, I've actually. I might just put that straight up. It will be like fifty-two minutes long, longer than my usual videos. But you know, you'll you'll get to um, see Mike's argument, which is in response, by the way, to what's his name again. I can't. I don't I, even re- remember his name. I just say the. I I clearly want to say. Yeah, he's that. Producer. He's that. Or, com- or, or video maker. I forgot the name. I just I, because I'm afraid to butcher his name. So that's what. Oh, so that's why I just I just touched the pronunciation. Yeah, I, I've done. I've done a number of responses on him before, um, but Mike has done a, a good response, and it's based on Hong Kong to do with the, the protest and stuff like that. So. You know, you know, you'll enjoy that. You know, I think it's like fifty-two minutes less or something like that. So I'll, I'll be sure to get that up um, soon. Um, and it won't take. I don't think it will take long at all. So yeah, folk. Um, thank you obviously for watching the live feed and everything, and obviously thank you for y- your own input and everything. I don't think I missed anything. I even checked Facebook and that. And I do apologise, you know, if I did miss anything like that. Um, but yeah, hope it's been informative for you guys and you've enjoyed it. I'll wait two seconds. Somebody. What do you mean, fight? Alright. <laughs> so yeah, it's not really. <laughs> I think it's one of the questions of the thing. Oh, okay, no problem. Huh? So this the God debate is going ahead, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, um, anyway folk, thank you for watching, it's been good talking and uh, obviously informative on quite a number of things and I hope it's been informative for you guys. Okay, cheers. Bye bye.